The Jordan NBA 2K23. The Jordan challenges. The Jordan challenges. The Jordan challenges. Yay. Uh oh. The Jordan challenges. I'm doing this. Get this out the way. Let's get. Let's go ahead and do these challenges and get this out of the way. What I'm gonna do with these rewards? Nothing. I, I'm playing. I, I NBA 2K24. I'm gonna get on that after this, but uh, I'm gonna start playing that after this. But I just want to do these challenges just to relive the moments, the epic Jordan moments, and then after that, I'm a. After I play this, I'm gonna delete the game off my hard drive. I still have a hard copy of the game, but I probably, you know what? I probably sell the hard copy. You know, it's the hard copy right here. Maybe somebody want to buy it up oh, for PS5. Uh oh, I pulled my cord and dropped my joystick. It's my old joystick, it don't matter. Make sure my connection is good. All right. Let's go ahead and get the challenge going, man. Win the game. Score 16 points, grab nine rebounds. We just win the game and score 16 points. If the rebounds happen, if it do, it do. If it don't, it don't matter. It don't matter. Let's just get this thing going. Well, for Michael Jordan, his legendary stature begins oh, here at the University of North Carolina. Interestingly enough, when Michael came into college, he wasn't thought of as going to be the savior to North Carolina. North Carolina was already number one team in the nation. So all of a sudden he comes into this talented team where he could develop and learn his skills and learn his craft. And I think that was the best thing for him. The game between North Carolina and Georgetown this game is so important because you have three top 75 players playing in this game. Patrick Ewing was probably the premier player in college basketball, uh, along with James Worthy. Uh, and now you're adding Michael Jordan to the mix. Michael became a focal point with inside of the game that I don't know if Georgetown was aware of or was ready for. I think Michael Jordan hitting that game winning shot propelled him uh, into a great stratosphere of confidence. This is where he honed his skills to become the greatest basketball player that we've ever seen. Hmm. Later nice tonight, interview. the Superdome will be celebrating a new national champion. Now, let's go over to tonight's public address announcer, Tommy Edwards. Fans, welcome to the college championship game. Today's matchup, the Georgetown Lions and the North Carolina Tar Heels. For Georgetown, at power forward, standing six foot eight, number 12, Harold McCray. For North Carolina, starting at point, six feet four inches, number 32, Adam Bartman. For Georgetown, at shooting guard, six feet four inches, number 14, Roy Duncan. North Carolina, starting at the small forward, six feet seven inches, number 51, Greg. For Georgetown, at the other forward position, at six foot six inches, number 31, John Ness. For North Carolina, the man in the middle, number 41. Sam Perkins. Brooklyn, New York, Sam For Georgetown at golf, number 21. 6'3", 170-pound senior from Gastonia, North Carolina, Eric Brown. For North Carolina at number 
Georgetown, the man in the middle, number 33, seven feet, 220 pound freshman from Cambridge, Massachusetts, Pat Ewing. For North Carolina at forward, number 52, 6'9, 219 pound junior from Gastoni. Welcome everyone to the Dome here in New Orleans. It's the 1982 National Championship game. The Georgetown Hoyas facing off with the North Carolina Tar Heels. With Clark Kellogg, Coach Mike Fratello, and our reporter David Aldrich, this is Kevin Harlan. Mike, both of these teams featuring incredible freshmen. For North Carolina, guard Michael Jordan has been fantastic averaging about 13 points per game, shooting well over 50% from the field. Jordan is a big game player. And for the Hoyas, Clark, the seven-foot freshman, Pat Ewing, leads the way. You know what, Kevin, defensively, I don't know if I've seen anybody better than Ewing. Controls the paint, protects the rim, and you can be assured that Pat Ewing is going to make it tough for Carolina to score the ball inside. And, and even as a freshman, he will have an impact on this game. Yeah, I agree. In the Hoyas backcourt, Sleepy Boyd and Roy Duncan with John Nash and Harold McRae at the forward. And star Pat Ewing is the five. For UNC, it's Adam Barnett and Michael Jordan at the guard spots. At forward, Craig Bacon and All-American James Worthy. And Sam Perkins is the center. These schools' talented freshmen, they will have a lot to say about who wins tonight. Here you go. And it's the Hoyas to start out. Now Duncan to the paint. Floyd, that's deep. chance effort it's hauled in by the Tar Heel and now the Tar Heels on the break Jordan finds worthy timeout called the Tar Heel Clark Ewing and Jordan incredible freshman talents in different ways yeah you know Kevin Ewing's MO is to dominate the inside defensively rebounding and blocking shots rim protecting Scoring near the hoop, Jordan is looking to get his by shooting and slashing. Play lockdown perimeter D. Boy, it's a joy to watch both of these guys play, and I can't wait to see them get after it. I can't wait either. On offense, here are the Hoyas. Fouled on the shot and picks up two points, so one free throw coming up. Establishing that dominant force inside early. Ewing's a handful for UNC. And he's got his first chance at the line here. Clark and Mike, as we know, two big rule differences between the college and NBA game. No three-point line in NCAA basketball. And Clark, no shot clock as well. Yeah, I think those rules, Kevin, favor teams that focus on the inside play. Guys like Pat Ewing. It also rewards those teams that are patient. Teams like UNC who are prone to play a delay game at times. Something that makes Michael Jordan's performance even more impressive, he's only a freshman. And here he is in the starting five of the finals. Here's Floyd, passes it to Duncan, to the middle. Looking for Ewing, he gets it there. The rebound by Jordan. Now the Tar Heels with it. Pass to Perkins. Jordan trying to free himself up. Perkins with the bucket. There are so many different ways for guys to stay in shape in the offseason. For Sam Perkins, how about this? He worked a construction job. Perkins trying to add strength, and we'll see how much it helps in his battle with Pat Ewing down low. The Hoyas with another miss. Ewing's gone 104 so far. 
Jordan with the ball. Guarded now by Duncan. Outside Jordan. Michael Jordan, what a leaper. Flying high, Jordan levitates. And a dream deferred. The Tar Heels back once again in this championship game. For more, let's go to our championship sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Thanks very much. When you think about North Carolina, they are seeking their first national title in 25 years. They've been so close so many times. Four times they were national runners up, including last year. Sam Perkins and James Worthy are back from that team. They each said they learned a lot from last year's run in the tournament. Kevin? Thank you, D.A. And for the Tar Heels, Mike, tonight, the X Factor might be a freshman. This Michael Jordan kid is special. He lives for these big moments. Told me he wished he could have played last year. Might have been a different result. Stage doesn't seem too big for him, does it, Mike? Never. Well, this UNC team, they're known for their delay game. Without a shot clock, they'll hold the ball late, which in turn will shorten the games. And you know, Mike, that style's worked extremely well for them this season. North Carolina has won 15 straight games and overall 31 and 2. Again, North Carolina. Really impressive, smart basketball from a freshman. Jordan showing you good discretion with his shot. Duncan, the pass to four. High arcing shot. It's hauled in by the Tar Heels. And here's the fast break. Jordan leading the way. Worthy kicks to Jordan. It's hauled in by Ewing. Now here's Duncan. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Nash dishes to Ewing. Nash right side. Goes up the baseline, and it's Perkins with the rebound. You know, before this weekend, none of these guys have played in a dome. It's hard to shoot in these places, Clark. Yeah, you know, I think sometimes, Mike, that's a tad overrated, but there is something to the fact that your depth perception is a little bit off. You can't really simulate what it's like in a dome. So I think you look for these teams to really attack and not settle for jump shot. Smart play is what it's all about in a tight game. Really good work in transition that time. Here's Jordan. Do not test Pat Ewing. Wow, try someone else. Establishing his presence inside. George drawing more contact here. The Tar Heels shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. And the Hoyas will go for a different look here. Green is checked in for Ewing. Davis comes in for McCray. Bailey is checked in for Duncan. And it's Weber in for Floyd. The Hoyas trail by four. Nash outside. Right side, Green. Back to Nash. And there's the pass to Green. Shot on the wing. Misses off the right iron. And so here now, North Carolina. Here's Jordan. Rebounded by Bailey. Coach, a tough stretch for this offense. I'd say they need to get back to what they do best. Right now, that's a question mark. A big question mark. You know, the way he shot went so wide, pretty obvious he got fouled. Oh, yeah, plenty of contact there. And good on the second, so he makes them both. Here's Worthy. Fouled in the act of shooting. Gets the bucket anyway, so a three-point play chance for him. Exactly the play you expect from Worthy in a high-stakes game. I mean, giving everything he has and able to get the and-one chance as a result. Nash outside. 
Back to Weber. Pass to Green. And it's Perkins with the rebound. Our heels leading by four. Inside. It's deflected. It's stolen by Green. And the foul called on Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. That's foul number two for him. And the Tar Heels making a change here. Substitution on the court. Green finds Davis. Here's Bailey. It's Davis on the wing. Top of the key, Nash. Passes it to Weber. Back to Nash. Weber with it. Lots of room. Bailey misses. Mike, when we take a look out on the court, so much talent out there right in front of us on the floor. Kevin, there are at least five bona fide NBA players in this game. Ewing, Jordan, Perkins, Floyd, Worthy. A star-studded championship game. And great shot selection by North Carolina. This is a team that was over 60% during the regular season. Weber, the pass to Davis. Here's Bailey. Back to Green. Goes back up. Crafty move. They shoot again, and it's good on the way out. Green's got his first bucket in this one. Getting aggressive and creating a second chance opportunity. Exactly what coaches want to see. Perkins with the screen for Jordan. Another shot. No good from Perkins. The Hoy is trail by four. Bailey passes to Nash. And yes, it's good. Nash has got his first bucket of the night. Great work on the interior. Pounding the ball in close and going up with confidence. The conference freshman of the year. Guard Michael Jordan appears headed to Slaughter. And they double up Jordan. Knocks it loose. Davis with it. And Worthy picks him up defensively. Nash outside. It's Davis on the wing. Over to the wing. Pass to Weber. Can't tie it up as that one misses. And young Michael Jordan, born in Brooklyn. Clark, he grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina. See, Kevin, it's well chronicled, but Jordan didn't make his varsity basketball team until he was a junior. It's an indication of how everybody's journey to development is different. Michael used that slight, though, as fuel becoming a high school All-American. Michael Jordan, one to keep tabs on as his career progresses. And the Hoyas with some changes. Patrick Ewing's checked in for Davis. Duncan comes in for Nash. And Floyd subbed in for Weber. The pass to four. And here's Ewing, worthy defending from seven. And Ewing with the nice inside bucket. Ewing's got five points so far. Playing in his final game at Georgetown, senior guard Eric Sleepy Floyd with just about 2,300 career points. Floyd is the all-time leader in Hoyas basketball history. Here's Floyd. He's defended by Jordan. That one good for two. In amongst the big, bad Carolina defense, Sleepy Floyd gets it to go. That was the 2K drive, as that move deserved another look. He made that drive look easy, but that had a high degree of difficulty. Outside, Jordan. To the inside, Worthy. And Ewing sends it back. You can tell Ewing eager to block shots, and his reach, timing, and jumping ability can often make it look easy. Bailey passes to four. Down low. The jump hook, the putback, and Green is right there. And the Hoyas lead by two. There you go. Relentless pursuit of the ball. I love it. He never stopped working. And they double up Jordan. Barnett passes to Jordan. Now 
Pass to McLaughlin. Back to Jordan. Duncan brings the double team. Ahoy is with the steal. They've racked up a few of those already. Here's Floyd. Barnett covering and stolen by Worthy. Jordan against Duncan. Jordan is double. McLaughlin, the pass to Jordan. Here's the screen to end the cold streak. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Green. And Clark, the man they call Sleepy. Floyd is 6-3. And some kind of excitement for the Hoyas. Love the way he plays with such flair and enthusiasm and energy. He's the focal point of the Georgetown attack. And I really expect Sleepy Floyd to be a first-round draft pick in the upcoming NBA draft. He is a dynamo for sure. Yep. And the Tar Heels making a change here. Adams checked in. Mike, we're still in the first half, but Jordan's been fantastic so far. Jordan is not just scoring, but he's also been efficient, not wasting his chances. Well, Gastonia, North Carolina, a small town of less than 50,000 people, features two stars in tonight's title game. David Aldridge has more. Hey, Kevin, thanks very much. Now, James Worthy of North Carolina and Sleepy Floyd of Georgetown both hail from Gastonia. While they grew up going to church together, they went to rival high schools. Despite James being highly recruited and Floyd going under the radar, it was Sleepy's Hunter Hess High that got the better of James's Ashbrook in the 1977 state title game. David, that is a great story. And very interesting. Thank you very much. Hey, Mike, they say Gastonia, North Carolina, pretty much shut down tonight, all glued to the game. You are <laughs> correct. Everyone in that town is watching this game. Worthy with a chance to avenge the state title lost with a national title win. Wouldn't that be something? Sam Perkins, he's checked in for North Carolina. Explosive on the bounce. Michael Jordan. In this huge... game. Michael Jordan is stepping into the spotlight. Here's Floyd. Here's Ewing. And the last shot before the buzzer is off. On defense, Perkins' long arms are a big factor helping him to alter shots. So that'll be it for the first half. Fairly even battle underway in this one. North Carolina's ahead, leading by just one. And as dusk descends over the French Quarter here in New Orleans, Louisiana, we're ready to go with the second half. With Clark Kellogg, Mike Fratello, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Coming to you live from New Orleans, North Carolina, and Georgetown. Tonight, we'll crown a champion. Timeout called the Tar Heel. Here's Barnett. During this year's NCAA tournament, North Carolina is shooting over 75% in second halves. Some tremendous post-halftime play. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. In the tournament, Clark the Tar Heels over 75% after the break. How have they shot it so well? There are a number of factors, Kevin, but I think one of the primary ones is patience. UNC has that stall game, if you will. They're looking for the best shot, and they wait for the right shot. The experience of James Worthy, I think, helps them with that as well. Helps them a lot. Taking a look at the Hoyas, we've got Floyd. 
McCray is up there with Nash. Then it's Ewing, and it's Duncan, and at the shooting guard position. Well, great job by the Tar Heels so far, neutralizing Pat Ewing. Well, you have to box Pat out, clearly. And you can't over-attack him with your offense. UNC doing a nice job keeping Ewing in check so far. Both free throws good from Ewing. At the free throw line, Pat Ewing is solid. Good mechanics. I think it could get even better. To the paint, stolen by Ewing. Here's Duncan. Great pass to set up the lay-in. Duncan's got his second basket. He saw the lane open up, and he led his man perfectly with the pass. Barnett passes to Bacon. Duncan against Jordan. Worthy, a screen on Duncan. Here's Jordan. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> North Carolina freshman Michael Jordan. Fantastic, Mike, so far. Shooting well. Looking very comfortable shooting in a dome. Jordan will be key down the stretch. Passes to Ewing. Over Perkins. Ewing misses. Ewing's gone three of nine shooting. High post, Jordan. Perkins with the screen. Pass to Barnett. He dishes it to Worthy. Jordan with it. He's got 18. And stolen by Nash. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. Ewing's got 11 points. At just a shade under seven feet tall, really hard to cover Ewing in space. And here is Jordan. Patient possession here from the Tar Heels in no hurry at all. Born in Washington, D.C., John Thompson is the perfect head coach for Georgetown. Big John was a great player back in his day. Backed up Bill Russell for two years with the Boston Celtics. Takes it inside. The layup off target. Now Nash, the pass to McCray. He feeds it to Ewing. Pass to Floyd, wide open. Jordan with the rebound. Jordan's got six rebounds now in the game. Big John Thompson patrolling the sidelines, Clark for the Hoyas. What makes him such a great coach? Well, the players love, but they also respect him greatly. You marvel at what he's done at Georgetown. He's really built that program into a perennial power. Prior to his arrival in 1972, it was a perennial losing program. He's got the Hoyas right on the precipice of a championship tonight. He does indeed. They can't stop Ewing around the bucket. Really showing what he can do in the painted area. Ewing will be a monster if he continues to develop off of that. Jordan against Duncan. Now, here's Jordan. 18 points for him. How big has Jordan been for North Carolina? Up to the 20-point mark, ready for the moment. Mike, for each school, a chance to make some history tonight. Georgetown looking for their first national title. UNC, they haven't won it all in 25 years. That one drops for him. Hard for North Carolina to contest this. Ewing uses his size to snatch the rebound and get a shot of his own. Here's Jordan. 20 points for him. Kicks to Worthy. Jordan with it. And North Carolina in their delay game, taking their time. We know the Hoyas like to pressure the ball. 
but they have to stay patient. Carolina is hunting for a mistake. Nash, the pass to Ewing. A putback. It's hauled in by the Tar Heels. Perkins got six rebounds here tonight. Since the break, Clark, a great job by Georgetown defensively. They're making things hard on the Tar Heels offense. No easy looks allowed so far. Green with the block. Worthy dishes to Jordan. Worthy trying to break free. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. I like that Jordan won't back away. He doesn't back off. Even against tough defense, he takes the shot. And so Jordan nails both of them. And it's the Hoyas with the ball. The lead is two. Floyd passes to Duncan. And here are the Hoyas now. At the elbow, Green. Passes it to four. Good work defensively by Worthy. Boyd's gone just one for seven sh shooting tonight. Jordan looking it over. At the elbow, it's Worthy. Pass to Barnett. Back to Jordan. The Tar Heels with another miss. A frustrating night for the Tar Heels being forced into tough, bad shots by Georgetown. The Hoyas certainly playing championship defense right now. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Georgetown trying to get their first national title. This is a program that missed the NCAAs for 32 straight years. Just their second ever appearance in the Final Four. So he gets them both. And unlike North Carolina, Georgetown was not considered a blue blood in college hoops. No, I tell you what, that changed though, Kevin, when John Thompson got hired 11 years ago. It did. Yeah, Georgetown was considered a small hoop school. Now, they are a premier program. A title would cement them amongst the nation's best. Their recruiting has been terrific. Green, the pass to Ewing. Goes up and lays it nice and easy. Ewing's got the lead back up to four now for the Hoyas. Here's Worthy. And the bucket is good. Three-point play chance here for him. Can't be afraid tonight. Worthy letting it all ride out there. And the Tar Heels making a change here. Bacon's checked in. Another close one for North Carolina. They won their first game in the tournament by two points. Their largest margin of victory, just 10 points. And Green slams it in. Nice pass. Floyd with an excellent feel for the game. Difficult to match up with defensively. That's in, and the Hoyas lead is cut down to two on the bucket from Worthy. With a hard road ahead, they worked hard to get a good shot. And Clark, we know that UNC has played in lots of big-time, tight tournament games. Is that an advantage? I think it certainly helps, Kevin. You can't dismiss or discount that fact. The Tar Heels are comfortable and used to playing in close games. They have perfected late-game composure and execution. So tough to stop him on his way to the rack. It is. Love the casual style on that bucket. An important basket in a tight ball game. Nash outside on the pass to four. This is the green. Oh, Worthy with the block. Now the Tar Heels with it. Pass to Bacon. Worthy a screen on Nash. Bacon, the pass to Worthy. Perkins kicks to Jordan. Perkins with the screen for Jordan. Over Duncan. And they're unable to get the tying basket there. The Tar Heels being patient, hoping to capitalize on a mistake by Georgetown. 
Here's Floyd. Barnett covering. Floyd passes to Duncan. And the foul called on Michael Jordan. That'll be his fourth foul of the game, and due to the single bonus situation, they'll now have a chance at the line for the one and one. That one is no good. Tar Heels trail by three. To the inside. Nice move. And there's Worthy on the assist by Jordan. And probably his last collegiate game, James Worthy, definitely impressing those NBA scouts. Floyd passes to Ewing. Over Perkins. Pass to four. And there's the feed to Ewing. Pass to Green. Perkins with the block. Great positioning from Perkins defensively there. And we know defense wins championships. Got a piece of it. Here's Foy. There's the pass to Duncan. Ewing inside. Covered by Perkins. He muscles it in through the contact, and they call the foul. He's on his way to the free throw line. Ewing, what pressure. I know it's the finals, but Ewing shrugging it off, and Georgetown knows they can count on him to deliver. When the game is tight, he is the guy who they want at the strike. Someone who consistently makes his free throws. Huge play by Worthy. He's so versatile at the offensive end. And the Hoyas call time here. And it's the Hoyas with the ball. A two-point game. The much-talked-about matchup of freshmen. Jordan and Ewing. Mike, it's been very close. While the two don't directly face off, they set the tone for their teams. We never say that about first-year players. Never. And here is Jordan. Pass to Barnett. Can't tie it up as that one's no good. You know, these are exactly the kinds of shots that kept me from coaching. This stuff drives a coach crazy. Yeah, a really horrible attempt. They can get much better looks than that. Now, Jordan. To tie it up. Here's Perkins. The shot goes down and gets this game back to even. Perkins knocks it down in a big moment. Huge for UNC. A minute 20 left here in the second half. And the Hoyas call timeout here. There's 117 left to play here in the second half. Here's Foy. Green left side. Nash outside. Passes it to four. Duncan outside. He kicks it to Nash. Now they've held it for a minute. Maybe the defense will put some more pressure on him. Could use a bucket. Oh, no good on the bucket. Tremendous hustle working hard for that bucket. And 
and for the first time in school history, Mike, the Hoyas are national champions. Coach John Thompson has his title. You just feel great for Big John, his players, guys like Sleepy Floyd in his final game at Georgetown. The first time I ever saw Michael Jordan was in 1981 at the McDonald's All-American game in Wichita, Kansas. As soon as I saw him on the court, he was different. Every practice session was like game seven. And he did that relentlessly every single session. Okay, he's dominating us. He's the, he's the best player in the gym by far. We see this, but can he do it against NBA players at that next level? 1984 Olympic team, we went on a, somewhat of an NBA tour against NBA All-Stars to prepare for the Olympics in LA. All the stars showed up. Larry Bird, Isaiah Thomas, Kevin McHale. The best player on the court was Michael Jordan, this junior from the University of North Carolina. And I think ultimately, it, it was the preview of the greatest player of all time coming on the scene. Known by many as the basketball capital of the world, Indiana is a fitting home for our contest tonight. And now, let's go across the floor. Time to hear the player introductions. Welcome, fans, to the exhibition game. The starting lineup for Team USA. A 6-1 sophomore from Washington, D.C. and Duke University, number 24, Pete Reynolds. Welcome, everyone. Joined by Clark Kellogg and Coach Mike Fratello. I'm Kevin Harlan. With us on the sidelines, David Aldridge. We're all set here for what promises to be an exciting exhibition game between Team USA and Mike, a squad of NBA stars. That's right, Kev. Team USA, of course, the team assembled from amateur talents across the country, which will go on to compete in the games this summer. Lots of young guys looking to make a splash in this one. Our Team USA has its work cut out for them, taking on these NBA stars. No kidding. You got that right. Just look at the roster for the NBA stars, and you'll see that the name is very appropriate. These are some of the best players the league has to offer. A bunch of big-name talent on their bench. The best of the best. You're right. Out there for Team USA, we've got Steve Alford and Michael Jordan at the one and two, then Chris Mullen at the small four, Wayman Tisdale at power four, and down low, it's Sam Perkins. And out there for the NBA stars, Isaiah Thomas is running things at the point. With Jim Paxson and Mark Aguirre at the two and three. And then it's teammates Larry Bird and Robert Parrish filling out the front court. We know this game doesn't go on anybody's record. But you can tell these players aren't about to come out here and just make each other look good. I think that speaks to the quality of the players on these two squads. These are all true competitors. They can't expect him to miss that shot consistently. Now here's Jordan. Pass to Tisdale. Shoots over Bird. Paxson pulls it in. I could only make this game more interesting to watch as a fan. Clark, the fact that both teams are playing for keeps is so interesting. Yeah, I agree with you. I think this contest is going to be full of a lot of up-and-down basketball. If you blink, you're going to miss it. 
I'm expecting a lot of high intensity, high effort play for both sides to be pushing themselves to be at their best. A big guy who can knock them down from the line. There are no easy tricks or hacks for limiting his offensive output. One guy we're going to keep a close eye on tonight, Mike, and this one is Michael Jordan out of North Carolina with a ton of prompt. And everyone wants to see how he measures up against real pros. Michael Jordan. No better time to get a sense of what he might be capable of in the NBA. Team USA shooting their first free throw tonight. And that one misses. You know, the separator with Jordan from other guys is his drive. That's obvious in my mind. He wants to win more than most anybody else out there on the floor. You know, if the defense is going to give him the mid-range jump shot, he's going to take it all game long, doing a nice job keeping things simple. Well, the defense must guard him better than that, especially when he's operating around the mid-range area. And the rejection by Pilch. A little taste of NBA-level defense for Jordan there. He can't expect to get every look he wants. Clark, there's so much to be excited about watching this unique matchup. But the biggest question is the most obvious one. And that's, who's going to win this game? Look, I don't want to be a guy that fudges on picks, but it could go either way, Kevin. I mean, Team USA has a lot of hungry and ambitious young talents, but don't expect the NBA stars just to show up and roll over. I think they also want to win this thing. They got a lot of pride, don't they? Yes, they do. Patrick Ewing's checked in for Team USA. And plenty of storylines to cover, but our sideline reporter, David Aldridge, as usual, is all over. David. Thanks very much. Now, everyone knows these are just exhibition games, but neither the Olympic team nor the NBA stars have any intention of taking it easy on one another. The tone seems to be surprisingly serious among these players. Guys, back to you. Well, that's going to be interesting, David. Thank you. I don't know what to expect from tonight's game, Mike. It's, it's going to be fascinating to watch. To me, that comes as no surprise. No matter the consequences of your game, you always want to play your very best. Against the best, correct? I mean, my goodness. Perkins with the screen for Jordan. Perkins with a screen on Paxson. Jordan passes to Perkins and finished off by Perkins. You know, something that could give the NBA stars an edge are the little things. Oftentimes, I say the playing things are the main things, and you learn that as a pro. Little attention to detail type stuff, like playing a strong transition game or being able to read and anticipate where a play is going. That's stuff that pros do. You might just see more high IQ plays coming from the NBA stars. They'll be a little more calculated with their approach. Where Team USA might try to just get things done with sheer willpower and effort. Plenty of power on this move by Ewing. Not giving the defense a chance to cut off his dunk. Thomas passes to Bird. Wow, Bird came out ready to play, didn't he? Giving Team USA all he's got on the offensive end. Pass to Ewing. Outside, Jordan. Tipped away. A steal by Isaiah Thomas, showing off his defensive talents. Here's Thomas. Goes back up. That shot missing. Excellent defense there from Ewing. Rebounded by Perkins, something he's become very good at while at UNC. Both teams here are dealing with unfamiliar lineups. Playing with guys they usually play against. It will be interesting to see how they adapt to best fit them. Well, Mike, to me, it simply looks like a glorified high-level playground game. I mean, you've got to make adjustments on the fly, adapt to one another. For Team USA and the NBA stars, that's going to be the case. If something isn't working, um, the coach just has to be adaptable. A mid-range master. Burr feels like no defender can stop his jumper. Jordan, the pass to Ewing. Outside for Jordan. Back to Ewing. 
Down it goes for his third basket in as many tries. Such a strong big man. Ewing refusing to get rattled by the contact. Thomas up top. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Paxson with the ball. Trying to find Bird. He's got it now. The putback controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. A big part of Team USA strategy has to be making the NBA stars earn their looks. Nothing easy. If they give up quality shots, you know these pros are going to knock them down. So they've got to take away those easy good looks. How about that good look by Jordan on that one? Coach, no question, Team USA is going to have to work overtime to effectively defend the NBA stars. Well, outworking the pros might just be the key. Team USA is full of energetic young guys. So all-out effort on that end could be the difference maker. And the Stars now going with a whole new group out there. And Team USA making a change here as well. Persons checked in. Reed gets the bucket. Defense should have sent help. The size advantage down low makes for an easy two points. Well, we're pretty far along in the first half now. And Clark, it's the NBA Stars who have the advantage on the scoreboard, as we can see. Showing us they came ready to win this thing. Not allowing Team USA to catch them unprepared and unfocused. Here's Hofer. On the wing, Jordan. He's guarded by McHale. Now, Jordan. To the middle. And Patrick Ewing with the slam. In that two-man game, if Ewing is involved, you have to give extra attention to Patrick. The Stars leading. Passes to McHale. Over Perkins. Williams trying to break free. No good from McHale. And here's Team USA now. Well, looks like Jordan Clark may be struggling a little against these NBA stars. Hey, we can't deny the fact this is a bigger challenge than he's used to, Kevin. I mean, these NBA stars are not holding back at all. And nothing's going to be easy for him in this one. Nope. Here's Jordan. No good. That would have tied it. Rough quarter for him. Just hasn't been able to connect. And that's the way it goes sometimes. Just got to stay with it. And the foul called on Michael Jordan. That is his first foul of the game. They've been undisciplined defensively, getting themselves into foul trouble far too early. And Team USA making a change here. Tisdale's checked in. Back to Reed. Dishes it to McHale. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. At the line for two. What a challenge McHale poses to defense. All the moves he has. Slippery, and he just seems to make guys foul him. Turner's checked in for Tisdale. And he makes both free throws. Team USA trails by four. Something that's really making this game special is this crowd. I'm told it's over 60,000 people who packed in here to see Team USA take on the NBA star. Amazing one-handed punch right there. Oh, man, on a mission, Clark. You're right, in a close game, showing some ferocity. These are the dunks you better finish if you're going up with just one hand. Out of bounds, Team USA takes possession. On catch, check in for Team USA. And so it's Turner with it. He brings it up for Team USA. 60,000 people. I mean, that's enormous for a rare look, Clark, at so many amazing players. And, Kevin, it's not surprising at all that many are salivating for this matchup. And I'm sure there are plenty of you folks at home who couldn't be here in person, but you're making just as much noise as these fans are in the building. And now we can enjoy it together. Me, Mike Clark, and all of you. I seriously doubt that was the shot that they were looking for right there. And the defense wants those type of shots. He played right into it. Back to Jordan. Inside. And 
Turner the bucket on the assist by Jordan. Jordan's got six assists in the game. You really can't overstate how many exciting rising stars there are on this team USA roster. Dynamic college athletes, many of whom already have big NBA expectations attached to them. Here's Team USA trailing by two. Let's go to David Aldridge and see what he's picking up on the sideline. Thank you, Kevin. Now, I have found something that both teams' coaches agree on. They think that these games are the best possible way to prepare the Olympic team for international competition. The NBA stars are among, if not the, best players in the world. So who better to challenge USA skills and bring them closer together as a team? Back to you guys. That's a good point. Thanks for that, D.A. Clark, any thoughts on these coaches' assessment? Well, Kevin, I fully agree with them. I mean, there's no way you can agree with them. Playing against the top talent is really the best way to develop your own game and grow as a player. You know the old saying, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. Oh, I love it, Clark. Picked away. And they're pushing it up. Here's Person, and he dunks it down. Yeah, and Jordan sees the floor so nicely. I mean, one of his guys has a clean look. He gets the ball to him in whip-like fashion. Guys like Perkins and Jordan and Ewing all seem like, to me, Clark, potential first-round picks. And I agree, Kevin, and it's a very interesting thought to consider while you watch how they handle these NBA stars. I mean, in some ways, this is like a first real taste of pro competition for these guys. Like, I could see Ewing going number one overall, and I could see Jordan, for instance, going in the top three or four picks. I don't have any arguments there. And a new group getting ready now for the Stars. Parrish is checked in for Williams. Bird comes in for McCain. Aguirre's checked in for Reed. And Isaiah Thomas is subbed in for Seasting. Mullins checked in for Team USA. And here is Jordan. And the rejection by Bird. Some savvy defense from the NBA stars. Outworking the younger guys. Thomas passes to Aguirre. Fades and shoots. They get it again. It's blocked. Tough to get a shot over the seven-foot contact. Great anticipation from him there. To the middle. Here's Turner. Good, and the assist goes to Jordan. And once more this half, they find a way to get great position inside. To the inside. Bird. And it's Bird with the jam. There's no denying Isaiah's eye for the game of basketball. He sees all the angles out there. Stolen by Parrish, and that's it for the first half of action in what's been a very close game here. Stars out in front, they're up by four. And we'll be back right after halftime for the start of the third quarter. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back, everyone, for the second half of action in this exhibition game between Team USA and the NBA Stars. It has been a fun one so far. Unable to get the ball in bounds, they get called for the five-second violation. NBA stars leading by four. What stood out to me after a full first half of play is the sense of competition out there on the floor. The NBA stars aren't handling Team USA with kid gloves. They're giving their all. The pass to Bird. Uncovered. Aguirre, good. Aguirre's got the lead up to six now for the Stars. Right off the pass, good work by Aguirre, getting himself all set up to go before he even has the ball. And Clark with Team USA, they don't seem to be holding anything back. Without question, if, if these young guys are intimidated by playing against pros, they're not showing any signs of that. And you know, it's not so easy to have to go up against the guys you're accustomed to looking up to, Kevin. That takes a lot of confidence. A lot of guts, you're right. 
Bird is out there with Parrish. Then there's Thomas. Then there's Paxson. And it's Aguirre and at the small forward position. So that's the group out there right now for the Stars. Second half is underway, and for the moment, it's the NBA Stars who are out ahead. And, you know, Kevin, this is where Team USA will really be tested. I mean, because they have to maintain their focus, keep fighting, and keep their composure and confidence. Pros never give up on the game. Yeah, this is a great challenge for Team USA. Mm-hmm. He hits the second from the line. NBA Stars leading by five. Up top, Paxson. Guarded by Jordan. Bird looking it over. From the high post. Offensive rebound. Hits the layup after the sweet pump fake to freeze the D. Bird's got 14. We're into the second half now, and Michael Jordan is not totally finding Clark his footing in this game. Yeah, he's dealing with some headwind. It's tough for him. You got to admit these NBA stars have kind of shaking them up a bit. They aren't letting him have his way out there. This is the big time, MJ. It is indeed. Well said, Clark. And Team USA making a change here. Ewing's checked in. Jordan against Paxson. Pass to Tisdale. Back to Jordan. It's Ewing high post. Off the left rim and out. And so Bird will bring it up for the NBA Stars. In the second half, they've only given up one basket coming from the free throw line. Unloads. Team USA grabs the miss. Stolen by Parrish. And the shot goes down. And now a nine-point NBA Stars lead. Tell you what, with his size and soft touch, Parrish is a very reliable option on the inside. You know, I find this an interesting challenge that all of these players have to deal with. Playing with a coach they're not quite familiar with. That can be more challenging than it seems when you haven't had a lot of practice time to build up a relationship there. Two points. Yeah. That one goes. Yes, and the Stars yes, lead yes, by 11. Once he gets in close, Paxson puts a really good touch on that shot. He knows how to adjust and take a little bit off of it when he needs to. I'm glad we got a chance to check out that fantastic drive one more time. He made that drive look easy, but that had a high degree of difficulty. Enjoying this big lead, and right now they look unstoppable on offense. Everything is going exactly how their coach drew it up. Top to bottom, this is the pinnacle of execution. Here's Jordan. Down low. Down it. And the Stars lead has been cut to just 11 points in the basket from Ewing. Mike, you can speak about this, but I've always thought it's an interesting dynamic when players have a new or temporary coach in control. It's really all about respect. As a player, you have to respect what the coach is trying to do. And as a coach... You have to respect that the players aren't fully accustomed to your style and be patient with them. Sounds like communication key. Ewing sets a screen for Jordan to the paint. Ewing can't get it to go. NBA stars leading by 11. In some ways, this game between Team USA and the NBA stars is a classic matchup of youth versus experience. No one knows this game better than the NBA stars, but Team USA has such explosive athleticism. Mike, they are desperate to find a basket. Hmm, they're having a really hard time out there. You're right. Here's Jordan. It's not going to go for him. Excellent D there from Parrish. So, Clark, if this is a battle of youth versus experience, which wins out? Kevin, that's a hard call. It's tough to pick a favorite here. I mean, I think Team USA could surprise us by keeping the energy level high as this game wears on. But down the stretch, I tend to lean towards the experience of the veterans because they've been here and done this so many times before. Yeah, they know how to finish strong. Exactly. 
Jordan passes to Tisdale. Bird with some nice D. The NBA stars with the ball. They're on a 14 to 3 run. Thomas finds Bird. Outside Aguirre. Pass to Paxson. Outside Thomas. Fires top of the key. Again, the star score. Yeah, the jump shot of Thomas. Cash money. Boy, it's nice seeing him knock down that mid-range jumper. Paxson passes to Thomas. Jordan against Aguirre. Bird outside. Jordan with the rebound. Jordan's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. You know, every player wants to win a game they're playing in. But in this matchup, there's some extra pride and motivation on the line. These NBA stars want to put the next generation in check. And Team USA wants to show us they're ready for the league. Offensively, it's all NBA stars right now. Putting together a very nice run. Jordan with it. Now Thomas defending. Stolen by Bird. Now here's Thomas. Over to the left wing. Unloads from 13. Uses the glass that time, and it's good. And the Stars lead by 21. That pride on the line certainly has added some extra Mike intensity to this game. You can just see it in the eyes of the players, especially here late in the game. This game might not count for the record books, but these teams are hungry to prove that they can get the better of each other. This has really been fun. And, you know, their lead just continues to grow, and it's not just because of their offense. They're getting it done at both ends. Yeah, their defense has been stellar as well. Great work on both ends. And as we enter the home stretch of this contest, Clark, the NBA stars are in command of the lead. Well, the effort from Team USA has been good. They've been playing hard, but the NBA stars just have that little bit of extra know-how, that veteran savvy, and that's helped them find the lead. And a new group getting ready now for the stars. Kevin McHale, he checked in for Bird. Reed comes in for Aguirre. Woodson's checked in for Paxson. And it's Easting in for Thomas. And Team USA making a change here as well. Sam Perkins, he's checked in for Tisdale. McHale kicks to Parrish. Here's Woodson. It's hauled in by Team USA. Mullen passes to Jordan. Perkins with the screen for Jordan. To end the run. No good from Perkins. We're deep into the second half of this one. Michael Jordan not having the dazzling game that some folks Clark were hoping for. You know, he just hasn't been able to kick into that higher gear against these NBA stars. But you know what? A competitor like him could bounce back at any moment and really start to get something going. It just takes a little flicker, and then the flame can be out of control. I think someday he'll have his day. Here's Reed. Here's McHale. The rebound by Mullen. Aggressive move. That's an easy two points most of the time. Michael Jordan on the wing. Passes it to Alford. There's the drive. Pulls it up. And once again, off the mark by Team USA. One guy who has been missing in action this game is Michael Jordan. And I think Team USA's current position really reflects that. They needed more from him. And Ewing with the block. Good read that time from Ewing defensively, showing that he can be impactful at that end of the floor, too. And he can't get the first one. Williams, he's checked in for Robert Parrish. A big group substitution here for Team USA. Concax checked in for Ewing. Turner comes in for Sam Perkins. Persons checked in for Mullen. And it's Reynolds and for Alford. And the shot is good. Nice pass from Jordan there, demonstrating that he's more than just a scorer. And the NBA stars with possession. Right wing. 
read the pass to Seasting. Nice pass. Led him to the rack perfectly for the layup. Seasting's got his first points of the game. Jordan outside. McHale with the rebound. McHale's got rebound number seven for him tonight. They swipe it. To the inside. It's stolen by McHale. Here is Seasting. Now the pass to Woodson. Now Reed. No one near him. And off the left side of the rim, and it swirls in for him. And, you know, they aren't showing any signs of easing up. Their offense looks superb right now. They can't get careless with the league. And so far, this hasn't been the case. Jordan, the pass to Turner. Now here's Jordan. He's guarded closely. Pass to Reynolds. Back to Jordan. They set the pick over Woodson. Turner trying to free himself up. And once again off the mark by Team USA. And there's the call on Michael Jordan. That's his third foul of the game. Second Looks like a foul out of frustration right there. Yeah, that's not a good foul. Just letting his emotions run a little wild. And Team USA making a change here. Alford's checked in. The feed to McHale. Williams trying to break free. McHale, that's good. And with this last run, they have shut the door on any chance of a comeback. Shut the door, turned off the lights, and locked it up. Fantastic run for them to end the game. Jordan looking it over. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the content. Hard not to respect how tough Jordan is inside. Really good at angling his body to pick up the foul call. No good on that one. And he can't get the second one to drop either. Coming up empty that time. And Mike, they can just hold on to the ball here. No question. They deserve to win. No good from McHale. Turner with it, and it's McHale picking him up. Turner passes to Alford. And so that'll do it. It's the NBA Stars coming out on top over Team USA. Like an exciting game, but in the end... Michael was uh, extremely competitive in everything he did. In Michael's second year, the Bulls were not any good, and we were the Boston Celtics, and we were on our way as one of the greatest teams ever to play basketball at any level at any time. In game one, we kill them. Larry, Kevin, Chief, Danny, DJ, they have great games. And at the end of the game, we look at the box score, and this guy named Michael Jordan, he's got 49 points. We just said, well, yeah. He's pretty darn good, but he'll never do that again. Game two takes 41 shots, makes 22 of them, takes 21 free throws and makes 19 of them and goes for 63 points. The Celtics are able to win the game in double overtime, 135 to 131. But 
we knew how lucky we had been to win that game because Michael was just so spectacular. That was the game where Larry Bird in his post-game media comments said, I've just seen God disguised as Michael Jordan. And the rest is history. The setting for this one, one of the most feared venues in the league, Boston Garden, all ready for NBA playoff basketball. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Boston, home of game two of this Chicago Bulls-Boston Celtics matchup. I'm Kevin Holland. I'll be joined by Clark Kellogg and Coach Mike Fratello. And Mike, Chicago hoping to even the series up here tonight. And it won't be easy. Not against this Celtics team. The Celtics are the favorites to come out of the East. And they've showed why that's the case with a convincing game one win. Very convincing. And the bright spot, Clark, from game one for the Chicago Bulls, the production they got from the terrific Michael Jordan. How about his performance? Didn't look like he had been bothered at all by that foot injury. 49 points, and he showed he's extremely ready for the big stage of the playoffs. But you know what? He's going to have to even be better for them to get the win tonight. That's a good thought. And the Bulls will start with Charles Oakley and Dave Corzine at the four and five. And in the point will be Kyle Macy. And on the wings, it's the fearsome duo of Michael Jordan and the Iceman, George Gervin. And the Celtics won at front court. Bird and McHale at the forward with Robert Parrish in the middle. The backcourt pairing for them. Dennis Johnson and Danny Ainge. And the Bulls are in dire need to even this series. Losing by 17 points in game one. They need to make a statement tonight. A nice shot by Jordan. Michael Jordan. You know, this is why Jordan is such an effective scorer. Picks his spots really well inside. The Celtics on offense. Bird outside. Back to Johnson. Pass to McHale. Six to shoot. Over Oakley. Busts the J after the KG pass fake. And Clark, the Bulls can't fall down 0-2 in a five-game series. Hey, Kevin, it's hard enough to beat this Celtics team in any series, but to take three straight games from them, virtually impossible. I think you're right. Clearly, he's found his rhythm early in this one, looking to score whenever he can, whenever he has. And this team encourages him to be active on offense because they understand how dangerous he can be. To the middle. Here's Parrish. It's blocked. Making a nice impact on defense at six foot eleven. Corzine is absolutely a shot blocking threat and a good rim protector. And Jordan with 49 points the last game. Have any chance you think he'll match that? I'm never comfortable betting against Michael Jordan, <laughs> Kevin. This guy is so good and so amazing. He's got the skill and the will to do it. I think a lot depends on what kind of defense the Celtics play on. And that's going to be the thing to watch. Now, here's Jordan. Corzine with the screen on Burke. Michael Jordan on the wing. And the rebound goes to McHale. And so Bird will bring it up for the Boston Celtics. Trailing by two. Now with the inside in the Celtics game plan, let's send it over to our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Thanks, guys. Now, this young Michael Jordan has a lot of tools in his bag. The first thing the Celtics want to do is stop straight line drives. Michael Jordan. The guys have to rotate over and give him angles off of the basket. But Jordan is so good with his quick first move and then going vertical allows him to convert right over the top of defenses. Guys? David, thank you. In game one, the Celtics tried five different defenders on Michael Jordan. And Mike, ultimately, he got a little fatigued, but not before he put up 49. <laughs> One of the assistant coaches with Chicago said about Jordan, he's got the jump shot ability of a Jerry West and the ability to go to the hoop of a Julius Irving. Pretty good people to be compared with. Phenomenal comparison. I love that. And the big question and Mike problem for the Celtics. How do they slow down Michael Jordan? Well, they sent a few options his way in game one. They know they need to be better and will still vary their looks. Here's Jordan after the basket by Boston. Over Johnson. 
that doesn't go either for Jordan. And Clark, here's something that no team has been able to do. Slow down the Celtics' front court. Well, there's just so much talent. Actually, too much talent at every position to be able to plug all the holes. They hurt you at both ends of the floor, too. Bird, Mikhail, Parrish, all elite players. I think someday all three will be in the Hall of Fame. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. Here's Jordan. Following the basket by Larry Bird. Comes up empty down low. Outside, McHale. Bird, the pass to H. Here's McHale. It's all in by the Bulls. There's 138 left in the first. Jordan with it. And it's Johnson picking him up. And Macy kicks to Jordan. He feeds it to Oakland. Kevin McHale pulls it in. The Celtics with the lead. On the wing, Bird. Guarded by Jordan. Bird, the pass to Paris. Banked in off the glass. And the Bulls unable to stay with the Celtics in game one. It was within reach until the fourth quarter, but fell 123 to 104. And you know, it really came down to the experience of the Celtics. That was a huge advantage for them. This is a group of championship players, and they had one of the best regular seasons ever as well. Jordan. And the Bulls with another miss. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets yanked soon. I mean, that's how bad his shot selection has been. Driving in. Here's Ainge. Bird outside. Inside. And it's blocked. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. Gervin with it. And it's McHale picking him up. Short. And they recover it. Down low. Stolen by Parrish. Let's it go from the wing. No good on the last second attempt there. And that does it for the first quarter. Austin on top, up by four. And the second quarter will get underway just after this short break. How long have I had my mic muted? I'm just not realizing my mic was muted. <laughs> Crazy. Welcome back, everyone, to the second quarter in this round one matchup between the Chicago Bulls and the Boston Celtics. slow things down. The Celtics want to get into an up and down game. Makes sense with all the weapons they have. So on the floor for Chicago to start the second quarter. They've got Corzine. Paxson is out there with Jordan. And it's Green and it's Banks and at the three slot. Here's Jordan following the basket by Larry Bird. Picked him clean. Here is Seasting. Corzine defending. Seasting passes to Ainge. Shoots from 12. Corzine with the rebound. Corzine's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. And the slower the game gets, Clark, the more beneficial that is for the Bulls. And, you know, that's not easy with all the great passes the Celtics have. The Bulls need to make sure they get back in transition because the Celtics are looking to push it every chance they get. Pushing that pace, you're right. Celtics foul. First Who is 21? Just over one minute has passed here in the second quarter. Jordan looking it over. Down to five on the shot clock. From the top of the key, he buries it. Jordan's got eight. You look at the numbers for Larry Bird this season, Mike, 25, 10, and 7. I mean, numbers that he's put up for several seasons in a row now. 
Bird has defined what the small forward position is all about. And that's the six foot ten, by the way. Hey, five. In every metric. I'm ready to call him the best small forward ever. It would take a special talent to knock him off that pedestal. And coming from you, that's high praise. You know, the separator with Jordan from other guys is his drive. That's obvious in my mind. He wants to win more than most anybody else out there on the floor. Now here's Jordan following the shot by Kevin McHale. Borzine with the screen on Burke. A shot by Jordan, no good. The defense willing to concede the mid-range as the lesser of evils. It paid off there. McHale inside. Jordan on him. McHale trying to free himself. And he makes that one. Walton's got his first two points. Oh, I wish he could play like that at that point in his career. He's a relentless rebounder. You know, we all know about the now that's vintage Jordan right there. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. A nice shot by Bird. No, I mean, Larry just throw it up there. He make it. Bird beats you in many different ways. That time from close range. Stolen by Bird. The 19-foot shot. And it's Chicago with the rebound. Rosine's got six rebounds now in the game. And Mike, the Celtics, as you said, so dominant at home. And that home record has everyone in the East nervous about playing them. The Celtics can make the most out of a home court advantage. Hard to see anybody taking many games here. Now, here is Ainge, following the miss by Michael Jordan. Back to Walton. And Walton throws it down. And as we expected, Mike Fratello, this Celtics front court has been a problem for Chicago. And this is something the Bulls won't ever have an answer to. I mean, the whole Eastern Conference didn't have an answer for Byrne, McHale, and Harris. The future Hall of Famers in some people's eyes. Well, I, like I don't know who's number 40 here. He's balling a little bit, though. afraid to throw his weight around. He's got quite a bit of weight to throw around. Oh, we got Paxton on, yeah, off the bench. Chicago. John Paxton. Austin making some changes. Robert Harris has checked in for Walt. And Wedman subbed in for Danny Ainge. No, yeah, Paxton was playing with them back then. Charles Oakley. He's checked in for Corzine. Now here's McHale. And two shots coming up at the line as he gets fouled on the shot. And the foul called on the Chicago Bulls. First trip to the line for him here. You know, in so many ways, Robert Paris is a big man's big guy. Dominant down in the paint. Focuses on high percentage shots. Runs the floor well. And does a good job rim protecting. This guy rebounds too. Dennis Johnson's checked in for Boston. Gervin's checked in for the Bulls. And now, let's head over to David Aldridge. Michael Thank you, Kevin. Both teams have made veteran acquisitions to bolster their rotations. For the Bulls, it's the Iceman, George Gervin. He'll be 34 a week from today. It's his 14th season after playing in San Antonio most of his career. The seventh all-time leading scorer with more than 26,000 points. His all-time playoff scoring average is right behind Jerry West. It's a pretty good scoring punch. Back to you. Well said. It is indeed. Thanks, D.A. George Gervin shot 47% this season, Clark, the lowest of his career. But that's because he had fewer opportunities. But you and I know he can still fill it up. There is no denying that, Kevin. He's been a tremendous scorer throughout his career, one of the very best. And we know George Gervin can finger roll. <laughs> well said. And during the season, Boston took five of the six meetings. Plus, Sydney Boston was beating just about everyone at that rate. Good pass. The finish like that can be. Wow. Rocking the rim. Good pass. Smiling back the other way. He had a bitter room and wanted to send a message in this close game. And Boston has possession after the Bulls pick up two. Bird, the pass to Perry. And it's Parrish with the jam. Inexcusable letting Parrish get this kind of position if you're the defense. You deserve to get dunked on. Paxson outside. Left side, Jordan. Screened by Oakley. From the line. Jordan's shot is off. 
You know, you'd like to see a little more effort there defensively, but maybe they wanted him to take that shot, baited him into it. Johnson surveying the floor. Back to Bird. The 10 foot. No good off the back of the rim. And there's the pass to Oakley. Here's Jordan. That's good from 17 feet away. Jordan's got the game tied up here for the Bulls. Yeah, we know Jordan is a master from the mid-range, whether he's squared up or falling away. You feel like it's tied up. So a tie that ain't bad. Finish the first half. And join us right back here after the break for the start of the second half. It's called the City of Champions. The third quarter set to get underway here at the Garden. We're here in Boston for game two of the Bulls and Celtics. Second half of play getting going here in Boston. And Mike looking at the two stars for the team. Michael Jordan right now with the edge over Larry Bird. And Jordan is a much more pure scorer than Bird. Still, you expect Bird to crank it up later if this team needs his scoring punch. And they're going to. You look at the firepower of this Boston team. Three all-stars in Bird, McHale, and Parrish. And this core has been together for their latest title runs. And now, let's go to D.A. Thanks very much. Now, we know about Larry Bird's determination at certain points, but Michael Jordan has some of those same qualities. He missed 64 games this season with a broken left foot. The Chicago management didn't want him to play anymore, but he put that foot down, citing his love of the game clause that's in his contract, which allows him to play whenever he wants, and he said, I'm going to play basketball. That's what I am, a basketball player. And he's back on the floor. Guys? David, thank you. It's a great story. Michael loves to play the game, Mike Fratello. And he rarely seems to get tired. Some people have speculated that because he missed a great deal of the season, he doesn't have the normal fatigue at this time of year. We've got Kevin McHale. Ainge is out there with Johnson. Then there's Burke. And it's Parrish in its center. That's the Boston Five. And the Celtics core club. Won in 1984 and returned to the finals again last season. And I think for this Celtics team, anything short of a title, Kevin, is a bust. I mean, they know they're the team to beat, and they carry themselves that way. One of the most talented teams we've probably ever seen in the league. I agree. First personal foul. First team foul. And so Bird will bring it up for the Boston Celtics. They haven't given up any points here in the second half. Johnson outside. Bird passes to Pierce. And it's Parrish with the jam. Looking at the way Jordan finished the regular season, you had to know that he was on the verge of having a stellar playoff run. Scary to think how good he'll be in the coming years. Mike, his work ethic, I know, impresses you so Come on, man. Dang. By McHale. Johnson attacking. The shot comes out. Now Chicago takes it the other way. Macy passes to Jordan. Why he jumped behind the three-point line? No, he can't make that. Almost 30 points per game for Michael Jordan. Mike, in the final five games of the season, an unbelievable streak. And the future for Jordan looks bright as ever. Starting to show he's more than just a high flyer. He started to develop the skills to score at all levels of the floor. Ah, you sound like a coach. I know you appreciate that game so much. And here's the break. Here's Ainge. Here's Johnson. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Second, you know, Johnson is such a crafty and unpredictable player. Understands how to draw fouls. Some changes here for the Celtics. Walton comes in for McHale, and it's Easting in for Ainge. And Chicago also making a switch. Banks is checked in. And when you look at that stacked 84 draft class, obviously there's Jordan. Some incredible talents in just their second season. Here is Seasting. No points in the game yet for him. 
Pass to Walton. And here is Johnson. Six on the shot clock. Screened by Walton. Johnson, the pass to Walton. And Walton throws it down. An outstanding find by Johnson. Very comfortable at the one or the two spot. Mike, a lot of impact players coming in that. Why did I take this shot? <laughs> I'm making it worse. And the talent is at all positions. Great guards, forwards, and of course, Hakeem as a center. Could go down as one of the best draft classes in a long, long time. You are so right. Here's Jordan. And again, Chicago. No good. Austin leading by six. And Jordan has gotten his points. But Clark, not at the same rate as we saw in game one. Exactly, Kevin. I think they're offering a lot more resistance to Michael Jordan. They're making him work for it more tonight. They know he's the guy that makes it happen for the Bulls. Everything flows through Michael in the Bulls' offense. Damn. Now, the highest priority for the cell phone. He, he's the engine. He's the driver. The, he's everything for this team. Yep. The whole car. Yes, he is. Always good to get another look at a terrific defensive play. Superb anticipation on that rejection, and that'll allow them to stay on the lead if they keep defending like that. Evans checked in for Burrow. Green, he's checked in for the Bulls. Jackson comes in for Kyle Mason. A steal. Here is Zestan, guarded by Jackson. And here we go. Fast break. Jordan's got it. Here's Green trying to end the drought. Jordan outside. There's the feed to Oakley. Back to Jordan. One on nine left in the Come on. And the dominance of the Celtics, Mike, have shown again this season. It feels like it's their year. They know it's championship or plus for them. They figure they'll be tested on the way and could also have to do their old pals, the Lakers. But all season long, they have been the front runner, and that won't change until they're knocked out. They've got the target on their back for sure. Here is Z-Sting. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Passes it to Wedman. Just five to shoot. Here is Z-Sting. Over Paxson. Kept alive. Walt. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. Man, Oakland would be fouled out by now. Charles Oakland. A gigantic guy. I love when Walt uses his size to attract attention inside. So Walton nails both of them. Bulls trail by six. Outside Jordan. 34 seconds left in the third quarter of the game. Feeds it to Green. And another miss by Chicago. No excuses, none. I mean, with the defense non-existent, I mean, he has to connect from there. The Celtics have shot 75% of the strike, 6 of 8. And the first one drops. The best defensive guard in the league. Dennis Johnson makes his opponents work for anything they get. Here's Chicago. Pass to Jordan. There's 18 seconds left here in the third quarter. Not that shot, bro. And again, Chicago. No good. Johnson outside. Off target there. That would have pushed the lead to double digits. And so it's Boston. Holding on to an eight-point lead and into the break. A good size advantage, and they'll look to it. Final quarter of play starting in this game two matchup. Between the Kobe challenge wasn't this hard. Bulls trail by eight. They make it too hard. It ain't fun when it's hard. He has about as fresh of legs as any. Too hard, man. So for Chicago right now, Paxson is out there with Michael Jordan. Then it's Corzine. Then it's Oakley. And it's what kind of pick is that, bro? All right, they crowd. You can't even drive. Jordan passes to Paxson. Offensive rebound. Back to Jordan. Out to the wing. From past the arc. Paxton, bro. What happened to Paxton, bro? For three, Paxton. 
Rebounded by McHale. McHale's got nine rebounds in the game. Getting it done. And the foul oh, called on Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. That'll be his second foul of the game. And Jordan with the broken foot earlier this season, Clark. Boy, right now he looks 100%, doesn't he? You know exactly right, Kevin. He Not a team hot for no reason. Come on, man. <laughs> what kind of stuff is this, man? Locked in now with no holds barred on his game. No limits at all. Exactly. Here's McHale. And Come on, McHale get a rebound out of nowhere. McHale's got the lead up to 10 now for the Celtics. I'm ready for the next challenge. Jordan. To the paint. Here's Oakley. Back to Jordan. Over McHale. And the Bulls with another miss. And you know, part of the reason why the Celtics feel comfortable pushing the tempo of development of Danny Ainge it gives them another option to initiate the fast break. Chicago making a switch here. Aces check in. Here's Ainge. McHale passes to Bird. They double team Bird. Now Ainge. Chicago grabs the miss. Oakley's got his seventh rebound. Now Joy supposed to be able to dunk this. How about time? Off the stench, always doing the little thing. He's an X factor for the Celtics. He can spark the team with a few hustle plays, three pointers, a great fit alongside the rest of the Boston Stars. Terrific fit. Shakes him. That one wide left. Pulled now Joy supposed to be able to dunk on this guy. Watch this. See how they stop him? He can't do nothing. He supposed to fly right by Dennis Johnson and dunk right on him. Over two and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter. No sense in throwing it down. Uh, if you cut to the middle, they're going to get the steal. Here's Corzine and the jump by Corzine. Doesn't get any easier than this. Corzine. Thank God this guy, whoever this guy, Corzine is. Thank goodness. And Jordan continues to be the dominant scoring force on the floor. Mike Bird can't even keep up with him. That's no knock on Bird. That's just how special Jordan is. He is putting on an absolute show in this game. I bet Bird is impressed too. Corzine with a screen on Johnson. Jordan. Can't make nothing, bro. Wonderful. And the D daring him to prove he can make it from that spot. Unfortunately for him, not able there. The next foul will put them in the penalty. You have to be careful now. You don't want to give away free points at the line. What job passing it? And we're about three and a half minutes into the fourth quarter. The pass to Ainge. The anchor of this defense, Corzine, making things difficult. The shot by Ainge, no good. Three? No, he don't make nothing, bro. What happens to streaky shooters? He couldn't miss in the first half, and now he can't buy one. Inside. Oh, and the jam by Bird. Chicago looking a bit lost. This Boston crowd really making their presence felt. I don't even know what he was doing then. Ainge against Mason. The shot's good for Maine. And now a 12-point Boston lead. A hard-nosed competitor. Ainge is not afraid to mix it up on the interior. And another great look at the 2K drive. Taking the onus on himself to make something happen. Got it into the teeth of the D and made them pay. Here's Oakley. Oakley can't shoot. Why did I shoot with him? Celtics leading by 12. Bird dishes to Ainge. Back to Bird. Rebounded by Corzine. Corzine's got 14 rebounds tonight. Going after. Him. Here's Jordan. Great tee that time from Johnson. You know, his scoring has just been a wall this quarter. I'm not sure what the issue is, but his team is doing what they can to try and get him going. Here's McHale. 
count it. Good. McHale's got the lead up to 14 now for Boston. They're doing absolutely everything they can to close the book on this one. Yeah, the time on the clock and the numbers on the scoreboard are all in their favor right now. Right side, Jordan. Five to shoot. Can't even get a pick, bro. Looking to end the run. And he overshot that one, missing. Johnson outside. Ainge kicks to McHale. Back to Ainge. Pass to Johnson. Celtics passing it around. Walton a screen on Jordan. Offensive rebound, Celtics. Passes to Corzine. He can't make the shot on Dennis Johnson. And Mike, despite a valiant effort, the Celtics proved to be just too much for the Bulls. Now they take a commanding 2 0 lead. Thank you everyone for making it out and supporting your team. We hope to see you again soon in the next home game. Move on to the next one. They made this stuff too hard, bro. Uh, asserting himself as one of the NBA's elite showmen, Michael Jordan earns MVP honors by stuffing the stat sheet by hitting clutch shots at 138. The third, 133 Eastern, uh, I don't remember this one. Win the game, score four point grab, eight rebound. Okay. I don't remember this one. The thing that I liked most about Michael Jordan as a player was the fact that I didn't have to try to guard him. <laughs> he had a, 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 a bad poor job. defensive scheme. He was going to fill the hoop up until he either figured it out or the game was over and he lost the game. Some of his uh, acrobatic drives to the hoop are, are just remarkable. You know, he can get past the defense and use a little bit of English off of the glass. The ball drops in so nice. It takes some really advanced skills to do that consistently. The 1988 All-Star Game was a showcase for, for Michael. Michael had figured out all the things he needed to know to be a dominant player. Everything. One-on-one, -on -one, uh, couldn't guard him. <laughs> what Michael Jordan showed the whole uh, sports world was the fact that uh, you put the right people with him, he's going to lead them to world championships, without question. He was a prime example of, of excellence and a leader that would lead you all the way to the top, all the way to the top. That was uh, basketball at its finest. Really good presentation. I give him that. The L weaving its way through these quiet winter streets as all the action is inside the raucous Chicago Stadium. Well, this is the All Star game they had in Chicago. The original court and everything. The 
Jordan was an uh, all-star his rookie year. Jordan versus uh, Magic. Since the 1950s. We'll see if then tonight, Clark, they can surpass that total. I would think they could. No shortage of scores on either side. I expect an up tempo, fast paced game, an exciting game with plenty of highlights and buckets. Cannot wait. And your West All Stars, Fat Lieber and Magic Johnson, the guards, Alex English and Carl Malone at the forward spots, and in the middle, Hakeem Olajuwon. For the East, it's Moses Malone inside, and Dominic Wilkins with Larry Bird, the forwards. And in the backcourt, Isaiah Thomas. Larry Bird. And you look at Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, rivals since college. Early on, no love lost between them, but over time, they've become friends. And Fat Lever snubbed a year ago, now a first-time All-Star well-deserved. He leads Come on, Jordan. doubles, one of the original stat sheet stuffers, averaging nine rebounds a game as well, best by a mile for NBA guard. Missed inside. You know, I think the effort on defense there has everything to do with why he missed that shot. Well done. Here's Jordan. English pulls it in. Clark, you see Larry and Magic together in those converse ads. They've become really the faces of the NBA. And Kevin, I think they've inherited the mantle from the great Dr. J. He's done such a great job representing the league all these years, and certainly he's left it in good hands with those two. Come on, Fat Lever. Fat Lever. Two shots. That one misses. Hey, Fat Miss both of them. But you never know. The West has quite a bit of talent, too. Indeed, they do. The East All Stars shooting their first. 40 points. We'll see. Free throws tonight. The first trip to the stripe in this one. You know, the separator with Jordan from other guys 
We'll see. That's obvious in my mind. He wants to win more than most anybody else out there on the floor. Now, here's Johnson. It's Lieber on the wing. Malone sets the pick for Lieber. That shot off. Bird with some nice D. Jordan inside. English is there. Here's Jordan. Back to Bird. Second shot opportunity. And Jordan with the layup. Harkin amidst this all-star celebration. Labor negotiations between the players and the NBA continue. Trying to find their way through this current impasse, Kevin, and looking to avoid any interruptions to this game that we all have a love affair with. Yeah, I know you and I hope they can find some common ground. Please make it happen soon. Hey, Clark, the record for points in the All-Star game is 42, set by Wilt Chamberlain back in the 1962 All-Star game. And you know, a lot of Wilt's records seem virtually untouchable, but I don't think that one is. With all these Fat Lever, that's two fouls. It might be broken tonight. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? And an exhibition. Oh, this is the 80s. With plenty of motivation for these stars nonetheless. For more, let's say hello to David Aldridge. Thanks very much. Now, I was talking to Larry Bird about his goals for the matchup, and he said, I think our job is to get the ball to Michael Jordan, get him into the game, and get the crowd into the game. So if Bird has anything to do with it, Michael Jordan will be the MVP. And that would be poetic justice this weekend. Guys, back to you. Especially where we are. Well said, David. Thank you. Jordan Clark, obviously, in front of his hometown crowd. He loves it, and they really love it. <laughs> no doubt about it, Kevin. You think about the fans in Chicago. They love basketball. And I can expect, and you can too, a ton of energy, some extra adrenaline anytime Michael touches the ball. Clark, this city is on fire with Jordan, aren't they? I mean, they love him, and they think about what's to come. My goodness. Smoking. Yeah. And Michael Jordan went in the dunk contest yesterday, Clark. Can he add to his trophy case tonight? Kevin, I think his teammates want to see him win the MVP. I think they're going to give him as many touches as he needs to have a chance to do it. Oh, that'll be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And Clark, when you look at Akeem Olajuwon's Houston Rockets, here is a team making a lot of moves. I tell you what, their trade for Joe Barry Carroll and Sleepy Floyd paying huge dividends. They're certainly on the rise in my mind. Yeah, a lot of people like those moves. Now, here's Jordan. Rocket six. The East All-Stars need to get another shot. Bird can't hit. And Michael Jordan won the dunk. It's, the, it's too hard, man. man was it great. Too hard. He and Dominique Clark put on a great show. And uh, maybe I'm just that bad. I'm not that bad. Yeah, they don't stop and shoot. I see why they stopped playing NBA 2K last year. The mechanics is kind of off. Who's going to finish behind me? Sounds just like it. Now here's Jordan after the miss from Carl Malone. Over Lieber. The offensive rebound. Malone finds Thomas. Up top, Jordan. Stolen by Malone. Hard to get something going offensively. To play in the first quarter. And the pass to English. Lever outside. Wants to get it to Elijah Wan and does. Malone with the block. Good on the bucket. And tonight's All Star MVP will have a $5,000 check presented in their name, Clark, to the Thurgood Marshall Black Education Fund. A great cause in honor of a terrific American. Johnson with it. Still looking for his first bucket in this one. Shoots over Jordan. And foul on the shot. So he'll get a chance at the line. 
upper, it's going to be on Michael Jordan. Johnson with incredible athleticism and uses it to bully the defense there. And that one goes in, too, from the line that time. Really always a plus. Doc Rivers. Stroke it from the line like that. The soft touch on full display. It's Ewing that time on the assist by Rivers. And with Patrick Ewing leading the way, the New York Knicks finally competitive again. The big man has quickly found the four with rookie point guard Mark Jackson. They are a team on the rise. Book that. A good close contest so far as we finish the first quarter. West All-Stars lead by two. And don't go away. We'll be back with the action for the start of the second quarter in just a moment. All right, come on. Welcome back, everyone, to the 1988 All-Star Game here in Chicago. As these great fans hope Michael Jordan can bring home the win and the MVP hardware. And the head coach of the East, Mike Fratello, his first time coaching in the All-Star Game. Double team on Ewing, back to Jordan. So hard, don't make nothing. The shot's so messed up. They've got Michael Jordan. Ewing is out there with Jordan. Then it's Ainge, and it's Rivers in at the one sweater. So that's who the East All-Star will start the second with. When it comes Nobody to cut to the, the basket or nothing. Come on. When one of his guys has a clean look, the ball is there quickly and on target. And here are the East All-Stars now. The West All-Stars getting there. Nobody can shoot threes. That. Mike's a terrific friend of yours and mine. And Fratello's Hawks recently moved into first. Look at this guy. Throwing alley oops and stuff. Unbelievable. Clark enabling him to become the coach of the East All-Star. Look at Dressler with that messed up hairline. As Brad Doherty gets extended minutes in his first All-Star appearance. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. <laughs> Ewing the pass to Rivers. Five on the clock. No picks. Can't even set a pick. At three off the mark. And Kareem looking to set the career record for all-star scoring. Isn't that something? It really is. Needs just 10 points to do it, Kevin. And you got to love his chances. I mean, that's a layup for him, pun intended. When NBA Live, EA Sports needs to start back making the game. EA Sports should start back making the game, man. Why they stop? They just gave up. 2K got too comfortable. They need some competition again. They need uh, EA Sports to get back in the game. Look at that. Can't even drive to the hole. I think EBA 2K24 a little bit better though. Wilkins in for Ainge. So an almost entirely new group now for the West. Elijah Wan's checked in for Abdul Jabbar. Malone comes in for James Worthy. Aguaya's checked in for McDaniel. And Levers subbed in for Magic Johnson. The West leading by eight. And the West has made their imprint here in the early going club. Unfazed by those that are predicting otherwise, they're playing with a lot of confidence and maybe a little bit of an edge. See, can't even play defense. Who, who is guarding? Yeah, Patrick Young. Especially when he's determined to score inside. It's his first trip to the line. And Elijah Wan drops them both. And here's Rivers, still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring yet from him. Ice cold. And here in the second quarter of action with a hair under two and a half minutes played so far. Jordan passes to Bird. Not enough space. Here's a choir. There you go. Choir's got the lead up to 12 now for the West All-Stars. And the Mavericks, Mark Aguirre, actually got married last night. A big and the East All Stars decide to take their first time out here. And it's Rivers with the ball. He brings it up for the East. In the second quarter, held scoreless. And Coach Mike Fratello, a colleague of ours, coaching in the All Star game, standing tall amongst a bunch of tall guys in the NBA. You know, his dad was an amateur boxer and. You know, I think that background gives Mike a lot of confidence as a coach. And now let's go over to David Aldridge with a report on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 
Thank you, Kevin. Oh, right. If you come out here, why they don't come out there to uh seventeenth game? No one else has been in more than thirteen. Why they don't set the pick out there? Why they don't come past the three point line to set the pick? I don't get it. I don't get it, man. Is, do I have to go in and make some adjustments to the settings? Or I don't know. But I think I'm gonna quit. I think I'm gonna quit this game. I'm gonna try to play it a little more. I'm just gonna quit, man. Cause the NBA 2K is it me? I seem like NBA 2K24 play a little better. Something out not right with the mechanics of this game. Man. I played a lot of 2Ks. I I used to play 2K a lot back in the day. There's something different about this, the mechanics of how this game plays, or something. When you call the pick and roll, the shooting mechanic is something off with the shooting mechanic, the pick and roll. I mean, I'm not the best player in the world, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not that bad. I should make more of these shots. Unless they got this on Hall of Fame. That might be what it is. It might be on Hall of Fame. But. Something not right about the game. I'm going to just delete it off and clear up the hard drive and move on. What Akeem provides for his team is a rock solid foundation. They can rely on him on both ends and build schemes around his talent. Now a timeout called by the East. Yeah, I'm going to delete this game. Wow. The East trail by 17. Now, here's Jordan. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Two minutes. You know what I'm saying? 156 left in the first half of basketball. Viewing a screen on Drexler. It's Jordan at the drop. <laughs> at least he drew a foul. Situation for the defender there. Put him in a pick. Jordan drives with such force, so it's not surprising he's able to draw the foul. These are his third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. Good on All right. Free throw shooting is about mechanics, confidence, and your mental approach. He's locked in from there most every night. Weaver against Thomas. And Isaiah Thomas picks up the foul. That's his first Yeah, you can't holler. If it's hard to steal. They call foul every time. I, I'm kind of used to that, though, but. Here's Drexler. Drexler doing all these dunks and stuff. Nobody cutting to the basket. I mean, I know this all-star game, but somebody ought to cut to the basket. All right, let's see if we can get Jordan to drive. Let's see if we can get him to drive. You can't drive. They got three people camped out under the basket. Here's Bird. Thank you, Bird. Thank you, Isaiah. First points in this one. How about this list? Players who have never missed an All-Star game in their career. Can't can't go for a steal. They're gonna call a foul every time. Isaiah Thomas and Akeem Olajuwon. Those last three playing here tonight. This is his first trip to the line tonight. Malone's checked in for you, and no good on the second free throw. So he goes 0 for two there. You don't see him have too many of those trips to the line. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. Michael Jordan using that strength of his to get into the defense to draw the foul on the way up. He's had four chances at the line, made them all. And the East All-Stars making a change here. McHale's checked in. And the West All-Stars with possession. They're on a 17-6 run. Lever, the pass to Elijah Wan. The shot, no good. And it's the East going the other way. Wilkins dishes to Jordan. There's 31 seconds left in the first half. Now a timeout called by the East. Timeout? I wanted him to dunk. <laughs> oh, no timeout. And some changes here for the West All-Stars. Abdul Jabbar's checked in for Elijah. Worthy comes in for a glide. And it's Johnson in for Lever. Now here's Jordan. He Come on, man. And now here comes Drexler leading the break. Throws it up high and stolen by Jordan. And oh, here we go with Thomas. Nobody back. Wow, is it tough to stay in front of Isaiah Thomas? And if there was a snub part for this year's All-Star game, many felt it was the sharpshooter Dale Ellis of the Sonics. 
Well, you take a look at what he's done. He's the only top 10 scorer in the NBA who was not an All-Star. They're playing a little bit better. they playing out a little bit, but... Their lead at 11 points to end the quarter. They've been playing some inspired defense, giving up very few easy points. And we welcome you back to the second half of the 1988 All-Star Game here in Chicago. Great performances from these players, whether it's their first time participating or their 17th. Come on, let's get to go on. The East trail by 11. Getting underway here in the second half. Here's the five for Brad Nelson. They've got Malone. Lever is out there with Johnson. Then it's Elijah Wan, and it's English, and at the three, the small four. That one falls. Larry Bird had it going last night at the Legends game, trying to fill it up tonight as well. You know, you get into the latter stages of the game, and it's normal to wonder who will take home the MVP. Castillo. It's certainly one of those accolades that's mentioned when you talk about the great ones. Thomas Dang, what Brad Bird, wide open. Thomas. Pass to Malone. Michael Jordan on the wing. Six to shoot. And there's the call on Fat Lever. That'll be Get him out of there. Nah, Fat Lever should have like four fouls by now. What are you talking about second foul? Yeah. Larry Bird and Isaiah Thomas. And how about this, Kevin? Thomas has won two out of the last four years. If he was Come on, Bird. MVPs, For second most, Bob Pennant is the only player to do it four times. And the East is trailing. And you know, a lot of these fans, Kevin, are really behind them, but and also Woo, good duck. I think they really just want to see highlight. Now we're getting some excitement here. You gotta time that steal just right, bro. What Jordan such a strong defender. Outstanding at reading the opposition and pouncing on those steals. Here's English, the master of the mid-range, Alex English. You know, people said Alex English was too light of frame, too skinny, not athletic enough. Well, how about this? He's playing in his seventh straight All-Star game. So much for being too skinny. And Larry Bird winning three straight MVP awards from 1983 to 1986. You know who the last player was to do that? Um, I know I'm going back to the 60s. Something. You tell me. Yeah. <laughs> I know you Bill know. Russell. Yeah, right. Of Bill course. Russell, 1960 to 63. Of course. I'm glad we bring him up. A legend. Yeah. Come on, the man. Stars ball. And the East with some changes. Darty. Run by one no Brad Darty. Comes in for Wilkins, and it's Rivers in for Dice. The West leading by five. Lever passes to Elijah Wan. Back to Lever. Elijah Wan on the wing. Now the feed to Malone. <laughs> Who did he block like that? Oakley? Showing that he can be impactful at that end of the floor, too. And right now, that Oakley? That terrific swat. Who did he be like that? Kevin Willis or was that Oakley? Got himself in the Who is number seven for them, man? Who is number seven for them? Carl Malone? No, on they, they oh that was Carl Malone he blocked like that. I thought Carl yeah, for some reason I thought Carl Malone was my and then was able to make the play. I ain't you and beat Carl Malone stuff, man. Into the stadium, into the stand. You were the beast though in his prime. You ain't can't lie, man. You know there's been talk about adding a third referee to NBA game. The commissioner and the Good foul. At the next meeting. And Clark, with three officials working games, do you think that results in more fouls being called, more eyes on the ball they can pick up? A lot more, certainly, with more guys out there. Yeah, you know, I think, Kevin, it might be the case early on with the third official, but over time, it'll smooth itself out off the ball. You know, some things you could get away with in the past, maybe not so much with three officials out there. Johnson. Nice move. And that's two points on the way. And Magic Johnson Clark made it clear coming into this game that he wanted the challenge of defending the great Michael Jordan. He certainly did. And the West as a team 
will certainly have their work cut out for him trying to slow that guy down. That is going to be fun to watch. Here's Doherty. Good, and it's Jordan picking up the assist. Jordan's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. And, you know, most of these guys are accustomed to having their team's offense built around them. It's an adjustment for them now to figure out who's going to get the rock most of the time. Jordan inside. English covering. Out to Bird. Back to Jordan. Doherty, the screen. Shot clock at five. The there. From Jordan. Finally. Finally. How about the all-star reserve? Guys that start normally are the stars of their team. How off the bench on a team of stars? Kevin, excellent point. For players who are used to starting the game, probably a rare experience coming in off the bench and trying to get it going. But I think these guys so enjoy being part of this. Good job. Draw the foul. Maybe we can foul them out. You're exactly right. That was an easy call on that shot. The East All Stars have been a perfect. Tied up. Ainge has checked in for the East. Then for the West All Stars, Abdul Jabbar comes in for English. And it's Drexler in for Lever. And, they now and the lead. And the lead. Living up to that favored and top billing. And, and the lead. So the timeout taken here, the first for the West All Stars. And the lead. About time, man. Something went my way. <laughs> You know it's going to Magic. 153 left to play in the third. Plays it up and banks it in. Trucks has got eight. And if there's a rival for the size and athleticism of Michael Jordan Clark, it might just be Clyde Drexler. I don't think there's any question about it, Kevin. The five slammer jammer alum can take flight with the very best of them. Yep, great athletes. Short. West All-Stars with the rebound. Can't cash in from close range. Well, you will not see that from him very often, especially right at the rim. And plenty of contact on the shot. So, two free throws coming up. Get these guys out of there, man. That's a mismatch. Try dressing. Then Dan A can't hold Clyde Dressler, man. Going five of nine. McHale's checked in for Darty. To the middle. Here's McHale. A good finish at the rack off the slick feet. McHale's got his first basket. This is the fourth All-Star game for the Celtics' Kevin McHale. Kids at home who want to learn how to score in the post, just put the isolated camera on Kevin McHale, please. Moves on moves on top of moves in the paint. Here's Drexler. Pass to Donaldson. Shot from 16. It's hauled in by Ewing. Well, I cannot believe he didn't capitalize there. And neither can he. Pass to Rivers. Jordan outside. Probably don't got Ewan in here. Oh, that is Ewan. My bad. And Clyde Drexler gets the whistle that time. Yeah. That's his first foul. And the East All-Stars with some changes. Moses Malone. He's checked in for Ewing. And Cheeks is subbed in for Donaldson. Oh, it's just the third quarter. West also making a switch. Were these checked in for Donaldson? I meant to get that to Carl Malone. Three seconds between shot and game clock. Drexler with it. Now guarded by Jordan. A nice shot by McDaniel. And the 6'8 forward from the Seattle Supersonics. Xavier McDaniel. Now in year three, he's got to be excited, making his very first All-Star appearance. Strong player from Wichita State. Jordan dishes to McHale. Here's Cheeks. Come on, Mo Cheeks. It's still anybody's game as he breaks the end of three. It's the West All-Star. Welcome back to Chicago for the 1988 All-Star Game. The grand finale of what's been a tremendous weekend to celebrate the NBA. So it's the West now. 
It's a three-point game. You take a look at the landscape of the NBA, and I tell you what, that Central Division, dominant. How about this? 36 games above 500 combined. We've got Jordan. McHale is out there with Wilkins. Then it's Thomas, and it's Malone in at the five. So that's the five in the game for the East All-Stars. You know, he's such a low... That's Moses Malone. I get him and Carl Malone mixed up. And relentlessness down there makes defenses almost have to foul. Gordy's checked in for McHale. While you look at that Central Division, all six teams on base to make the playoffs. And, you know, Chicago got off to that great start, Kevin. Then they cooled off just a bit. Now tied with Detroit at three games behind Atlanta. Those teams are draped up pretty good. Worthy kicks to Johnson. And he's going up for the alley-oop. Oh, on display, the motor of Carl Malone. And the 6'9 forward, Carl Malone out of Louisiana Tech, playing for the Utah Jazz. Yeah, Isaiah got that speed, bro. Number seven to honor the great Pete Maravich, who himself was a three-time All-Star with the New Orleans Jazz. Down the stretch here, the West is leading point. Getting it done, handling their business in fine fashion. And tell you what, it's been a really entertaining game. You said it. Thomas kicks to Wilkins. To the inside. And stolen by Malone. Pass break. Here comes the West. Worthy leading the charge. And contact on the shot. So he'll be shooting free throws here. For the boys that Worthy brings to his game, I mean, it's impressive. He keeps his cool even in tough situations. And he always seems to allow the game to come to him. The East making a switch. Birds checked in. The West All Stars also with the sub. Elijah Wan's checked in. Good job. He gets the whistle. Many guys out be fouling out by now. Be denied there. Great intensity to play through the foul. He misses the free throw. English, he's checked in for the West. East All Stars, and he sinks the second. And after the Central Division, the Midwest has been the second most competitive division. Those teams are sitting at ten games over 500. He kicks to Johnson. And wrestling for it there, but no one has possession. We'll have a jump ball. Mike Fratello, whatever name is. They got, uh... Malone, the pass to English. Shot clock at six. Malone finds Johnson. Over Thomas. Second chance shot. That shot off. The East All-Stars go the other way with it. Wilkins dishes to Jordan. Yeah, call the foul. As the whistle blows, he'll shoot two free throws. True 80s basketball, all the foul. Not to respect how tough Jordan is inside. Really good at angling his body to pick up a foul. And both free throws, good for Jordan. And Clark in the Midwest, those Rockets are really making a push. And they're doing it behind Akeem Olajuwon. To me, he's the best center in the NBA. They certainly got a chance to give the Lakers a run for their money. Oh, yeah. Yep, that one goes. And the West leads by three. And making his all-star debut in his third year in the league, Carl Malone, one of four players in the NBA, averaging over 20 points and 10 rebounds a game. Jordan with it. And it's Johnson picking him up. And Doherty kicks to Thomas. Come on, Thomas. You got to make a wide open shot like that. By three. And Commissioner David Stern in the house tonight. Since taking over four years ago, he's done a remarkable job helping guide this league to new unprecedented heights. Exactly. Here's Thomas. The vision of Larry Bird is not to be overlooked. Even though he's a At least we kept it competitive. Thomas not afraid of attacking inside. Really good work there. Johnson, the pass to Elijah Wan. And Magic Johnson continuing to orchestrate beautifully. Throwing it down with tremendous power. Woo! One-handed nonetheless. The pass to Dorgan. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Hakeem Elijah Wan. He should be fouled out by that. Five on him. And the East All-Stars making a change here. Ewing's checked in. Patrick Ewing. Outside Jordan. 
to the paint. Here's Bird. A shot that time. Bird is so man. Some solid defense here from Malone. One thing the league has done since Commissioner Stern has taken over, Clark is really marketing the league around its stars. And I like that uh, type of strategy. I agree with you, Kevin, wholeheartedly. And what better time to highlight those great stars than tonight? Thank you, Isaiah. Compelling personalities. The league is certainly on a great trajectory. It absolutely is. And there is the call on Michael Jordan. Now we'll get him his fourth foul of the game. Malone's check in for the East. And West also making a switch. Drexler's check in. Johnson against Jordan. Malone passes to Elijah Wan. Drexler with the ball. Two minutes remaining in the Five on the clock. Here's English. And the shot is long. The East trail by three. Outside Wilkins. Malone dishes to Jordan. Not the shot I wanted. <laughs> that doesn't go on the chance to tie. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets yanked soon. I mean, that's how bad his shot selection has been. Tries again. Drexler passes to Johnson. Down low. Goes up again, and foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. It's going to be a Michael Jordan. Boy, that was a nice play by Elijah. I don't know why Jordan fouled him. Still drawing contact. Second one is good. They both at the line, and it's a five-point game. And that makes it a two-possession game now. Those could turn out to be vital for you. Come on. We're still in it. Isaiah bagging down. He got that Chicago spirit. Southside Chicago. They're going to talk it over. They're leading by three. 122 left here in the fourth quarter. Johnson against Jordan. They need what he brings. Jordan fired out. Now they're going to have to get it done. Without Danny Eames has checked in for Jordan. First free throw is good. And that gives them a four point cushion. So it gets them both, and it's a five point game. And so Bird will bring it up for the East All-Stars. Thomas finds Malone. Trying to find Bird. He's got it now. Malone trying to break free. Shot's good from Bird. We got exactly what we expected. Bird doing what he does in the clutch. Oh, blood. Timeout called here. The West All-Stars decide to talk it over. They're ahead by three. 105 left in the fourth. Well, we kept it competitive. That's all that matters. Here's Johnson. This is a dual Elijah one. Back to Johnson. Pass to English. Malone sets the pick for English. Elijah one can't hit. Here are the East All Stars. They trail by three. Wilkins. Man, that was your chance, Wilkins. And Isaiah Thomas picks up the foul. That's his third foul so far. On a situation in effect, so we'll head to the free throw line for two. So the first one drops, and that gives them a four-point cushion. Usually, magic is very consistent and clutch from the line. But the question remains now: Will the stakes here be enough to rattle them just a little bit? Wilkins, the pass to Malone. And stolen by Malone. And he commits the intentional foul. Larry Bird. First personal foul. 
gets the first. That increases the lead to six. I'll tell you what, if you wanted the template for the perfect power forward, it might be Carl Malone. I mean, he's got everything you want in a format. Sensing an opportunity here to increase the lead and capitalizing on it. And the East All-Stars call time here. What fourth third down by seven. We've got 22 seconds left to play in the final quarter. Guys, what do you think? And you know, the clock is running out on them now. They just couldn't pull it together. Bird outside. That's too far out, bro. And another miss by the East. Drexler scanning the floor. Outside, Aguirre. And the West All-Stars seal the deal. Mild underdogs coming into the game, but Clark, the night was there. Yeah, you know, it's all about fun and games and entertainment in these All-Star games, but somebody's got to post the dub. All right, get me out of here. Nineteen eighty nine. We still in the eighties. We're talking about against the Cleveland. The shot was not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Juke Larry Nance correctly aimed the shot, win the game. Uh, we'll see. Let's see how they go. You know when Michael Jordan is coming to town, so you always wanted to get a good night sleep, a good night rest, something good to eat, because you know the next day Michael Jordan is in your building, and he's coming to put on the show, and you have to compete against that. Game five was at our place, and you know, the typical game, Eastern Conference game, a physical game, it was like a, a back and forth thing, the shot. You know, everybody want to talk about the shot. Chicago kept fighting. MJ kept making plays. It's at the end of the game, and we going to the timeout, and everybody talking. I was like, Coach, I want to guard MJ. Like, I got to guard MJ. Today, I'm attempting to beat the. That's getting this basketball, and that's MJ. He's like, we're going to put Craig Elo over there. I'm like, and he jumped up, and Elo jumps up, Elo stops, and MJ does this to Elo. Elo comes down, and he shoots it, and, and it was slow motion. It was like, uh, he's the guy that you want the ball in his hand late in the ball game, because he gonna win most of those ball games by himself. Pay attention. Chicago inbound. What can the Cavaliers do? The Cavs try to deny Jordan the ball. Mazo with the steal. Goodness, the Bulls throw it. I can't accept failure. Anyone fails at something, but I can't accept not trying. All right, Coach Cleveland leads Chicago inbound. What can the Cavaliers do? The Cavs try to deny Jordan the ball. They actually two on one him without the ball. Elo trying to catch back up. The shot's up. No, he misses. Wait a minute. One in game five in the first round. Oh, that's what type of. This is an interesting challenge here. Now hold on. Juke Elo. All right, Coach Cleveland leads Chicago inbound. What can the Cavaliers do? 
trying to deny Jordan the ball. They actually two on one him without the ball. Elo trying to catch back up. The shot's up. No, he misses. Cleveland is one in game five in the first round. How do I juke it from him? Coach Cleveland leads Chicago inbound. What can the Cavaliers do? The Cavs try to deny Jordan the ball. They actually two on one him without the ball. Elo trying to catch back up. The shot's up. No, he misses. Cleveland is one in game five in the first round. go all right coach cleveland lead chicago inbound what can the cavaliers do the Cavs try to deny jordan the ball they actually two on one him without the ball elo trying to catch back up the shot's up it's good there you go michael jordan wow coach a game five winning shot doug collins off the bench and the ball. doug collins with the jerry curl never There we go. That was the easy challenge. Shoot out. Another nineteen eighty nine. Jeez, bro. Two of the NBA's most spectacular dunkers and elite scorers and Michael Jordan and Dominique Wilkins go at each other. Bring the crowd to, okay, what's the thing? Win the game, outscore Dominique Wilkins, score 40 points, hold Dominique Wilkins to 20. Let's see how it go. Let's see how it go. Michael was a different level, man. 
is a different level of competitiveness, just sheer will to, to win. He changed the game. He changed the game. I mean, not just in one aspect, in many aspects, in every aspect of the game, he changed it. I played against some of the greatest players in the history of this game. Michael Jordan was one of those guys that lifted my ability to the next level. We enjoyed the competition with one another. We played very hard, fiercely against one another, but it was, a, it was like you had two gentlemen going head to head. Michael Jordan and I wasn't just coming down the court getting dunks after dunks. We found creative ways to score. I can't tell you the fun and the pleasure I had to play against him. You know, and Michael and I, we never really talked about those games. It was kind of an unspoken thing between us. You know, the respect level that we had was at a different level. I think I had a great game in Atlanta, and uh, I remember going to Chicago. Michael walks into our locker room, and we're still in suit and tie. We haven't gotten dressed yet, and he walks in our locker room, suit and tie, and I'm like, what is, what are you doing coming in our locker room? And I ain't gonna say exactly what I said. <laughs> and so he walked by me, he walked by Kevin Willis, and he got to Randy Whitman, he tapped him on his butt, and he said, lace him up, it's gonna be a long night. <laughs> he got 60 that night. <laughs> he got 60. And it was, a very, it was a very close game. I think it went down to the last shot in that game. But uh, I think he proved his point. An unmistakable view of the Windy City and a lot of anticipation in the air. Welcome, everyone, to Chicago. The this is Kevin Harlan along with me, Clark Kellogg. We've got Let's go. We don't need introductions. Let's go. As we get set to what hard grand goggles is go up against the Chicago Bulls. Clark, this should be a beauty. You know, each of these teams, Kevin, has a guy who is in the running for the league lead in scoring. Go. I'm, of course, talking about two guys that don't need introduction, Michael Jordan and Dominique Wilkins. Going to be a lot of fun watching these guys try to one-up each other offensively. In court, beyond just Jordan and Wilkins, plenty of other talented scorers on each of these teams as well. Kevin, you make a very good point. I mean, these are two... There we go. That's the Jordan I know. Which I think could result in this score really getting run up in a hurry. This should be one to remember. And out there for Atlanta, Spud Webb at the point with Doc Rivers at the two. At the forward positions, Dominique Wilkins and Moses Malone. John Conkac will be at center. And starting things off for the Bulls. It's John Jackson at point guard with Michael Jordan also at Jordan ain't playing. That's the Jordan I know. Now you can't have fun with it <laughs> with a game like that or playing like that. You can have fun with him playing like that. They're both exceptional scoring threats, and I know their teams are expecting each of them to be the difference makers out there as they try to get the W. And the foul called on Michael Jordan. And that's his first foul. Sacrificing his body, putting it on the line right there. A slow start for Atlanta in this one. It's a five-point game. You know, often, Clark, it's the team's respective leader who sets the tone for their whole squad. You are correct, partner. So if Jordan or Wilkins can manage to get off to a hot start, that could spread to the other guys and get their whole team rolling early. That's a good point. Now, here is Jordan. Following the miss by Moses Malone. Grant sets a screen for Jordan. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. First, first it goes on Moses Malone. First team. You know, Clark, in some ways, this game could and come down to either Jordan's or Wilkins. And who scores the most? Outperforming the other could seal the game for their team. And, Kevin, that's exactly what we'll be keeping a close eye on. Which one is leading in the point count? Because I agree the winner of that duel very well could decide this thing. Oh, what a duel it's going to be. And now for a little background on this superstar matchup, here's David Alden. Thanks, Can't guys. even set a pick, bro. And Dominique have met up in the slam dunk contest twice, each winning once. Just last year, the Jordan won over Dominique in one of the most talked about and controversial dunk contests ever. I know fans are hoping we'll see the tie-breaking contest between the two someday. 
Maybe they'll settle for tonight's game. Back to you. David, I can see it in my mind's eye. Those two going at it. Clark, no question. They're two of the most skilled dunkers in today's game. And, Kevin, it's just another thing that makes these meetings so electrifying, so must-see TV. Hardly beat getting to watch. Well, how is Grant Goggles it? I guess he wasn't wearing them back then. The athleticism is right just off the charts. He was wearing them in 89. This Bulls defense has to be limiting Dominic Wilkins' looks. They, they've got to contain that incredible scoring of his. Kevin, you're all over it, right on point. I mean, if Chicago can't disrupt his usual scoring, then they're in Yeah, he had a three-pointer by then. And really hey, don't let Dominique score. Can't afford to let him get it going from the three-point line. Webb against Pippen. The 10-footer. Rebound by the Bulls. Grant's got six rebounds in the game. Jordan passes to Baxter. Outside for Jordan. Over Wilkins. Jordan finds Grant. Score the basket. His second of two attempts. Credit to these Hawks, Clark, for having a constant postseason presence these last few seasons. Three straight second round appearances. And then last year, a tough loss in the first Woo, round. Good block. But I say, don't let that fool you. These Hawks are a very competitive team. They really are. Now here's Jordan following the miss by Moses Malone. Outside, Jordan. Six on the shot clock. They grab their own miss. Oh, uh, Grant, she playing for a contract. Man, I can't believe he blew that gimme, guys. Well, I know he's frustrated about that. Wilkins can't get it to go. And so Grant will bring it up for Chicago. Jordan, left side. It's stolen by Wilkins. To the right side. Now Webb. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. The pass to Rivers. To stop the drought. The rebound by Jordan. Some fresh competition, Clark, for the Bulls and Hawks in the league this year. With two expansion teams. Pippen was not that good at that point, was he? Exactly, Kevin. I mean, these teams are focused on the game at hand. That's pretty obvious. But this is a very interesting time for the NBA. A lot of new talent and the new landscape. A lot of growing indeed. You know, if Webb finds an opening in the mid-range, he'll take it. Defense has got to keep him marked at all times. And they pick up two. From the tip, this team has flexed its muscles and shown its dominance. 46 seconds left to play in the first. And here is Webb. High post shot. The rebound by Cartwright. You look at him, and he's a little hit and miss from there, even without a defender in his face. No guarantee. Paxson passes to Jordan. Clark right with a screen on Wilkins. Jordan. Rebound Atlanta. Boy, he's got to be kicking himself for failing to make that shot. That's money. They get a hand on it. And here's the fast break. Jordan leading the way. Here's Grant. Come on, Grant. Outside for Pippen. And no luck with that. Pippen, the man. Get him out of here. Jordan getting it done for the Chicago Bulls. He got the double digits for the quarter with 10 points total. We'll return shortly. everyone to Chicago as the second quarter gets underway. It's been an exciting game so far between the hometown Chicago Bulls and the visiting Atlanta Hawks. For the Bulls, they've got a new coach at the helm this season. With Phil Jackson, this is his first stint as a head coach here in the NBA. Now, here is Jordan. Now, that is his fourth basket of the night. Just seven shots to get there. You know, because Jordan is so spectacular, sometimes his strong fundamentals are overlooked. 
And he keeps it simple. Why get fancy when the pick and roll works like that? They've got Grant. Michael Jordan is out there with B.J. Armstrong. Then it's Pippen, and it's Cartwright in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. That's the group on the floor for Chicago. Jackson, of course, a former player, a former assistant under Doug Collins in Chicago. And Clark, I hear he's got some interesting ideas when it comes to on-court strategy. First, well, Kevin, first you know, he's certainly got some good pieces to... I'll score Wilkins. Score four points. Test those ideas out with. There's no denying that. But what I think matters most is that the guys seem to relate to him and like it. Chemistry between players and head coaches is critical. Well, you know, you played a long time, and you know how important that, that connection can be. That's a very key deal. Clark, how do you think the Bulls have done so far? Oh, don't fire. PJ Austin. Who is 34? Me don't look nothing like Kevin Will. A vocal presence both on the floor and in the locker room. Willis is somebody his teammates really respects. Will Purdue's checked in for the Bulls. Hey, it's as plain as pound cake. Keep it simple. They want is that Kenny Smith? And a great job to get that angle on a tremendous drive. Here in the second. That Kenny Smith with them, with the uh, Hawks. Yeah, that's Kenny Smith. Border with uh, a little over a minute gone. Ken Smith. He lobs it up. Ah. Uh. King with the block. Tries yet again. And no good that time. And Chicago will go the other way with the ball. You now looking back at the opening quarter, Clark, Jordan managed to stay ahead of Wilkins in points score. Yeah, really good start for him, Kevin, in that regard, but can he keep doing that the entire game? Purdue sucks, man. Boy, boy, tremendous vision from Rivers there. You see why he racks up so many assists. The Bulls leading by 18. Armstrong dishes to Jordan. Can't, uh, Purdue sucks, man. Played in the second quarter. Loose, stolen by Rivers. And so it looks like the Hawks will retain possession here. The Hawks trail by 18. And the foul called on Michael Jordan. That'll be his second foul of the game. Second personal foul. Second team foul. Wilkins finds Smith. Rivers with it. Guarded by Pippen. Well, you got to appreciate how consistent these Atlanta Hawks have been. I mean, season to season, even while going through some roster shakeups, they've been steady. This is his second trip to the free throw line. I remember Stacy King. He don't look like Stacy King, though. Last year, the Hawks were able to hit 50 wins for the fourth consecutive season. And Kevin, I think that speaks to obviously the product on the floor, but the quality of their organization, too. I mean, these are players and coaches who just know how to win games. Let's go to David Aldridge, who has some inside info on the show. I remember Antoine Carr. Hey Kevin, when you talk to the coaching staff and you say, what's the key to success against the Hawks, they have a one-word answer. Michael, they expect big numbers from Jordan, probably exceeding his average of 35 points from last season. Back to you, Kevin. Well, that's good stuff there, David. Sometimes, Clark, the answer is that simple, I guess. Yeah, you don't have to complicate it, especially when you're talking about Jordan, because he does make it really simple. Although he's not a one-man show, his whole team is going to have to still step up. And they take pride in that, don't they? Helping this very special talent do what they've got to do. Yeah, they're pros, and they get their checks twice a month, too. The Hawks and the Bulls, when you look at the measurables of teams and players, Pretty standard for the league with explosively athletic backcourts and then quite a bit of size down low, too. And the foul called on Michael Jordan. And that'll be his third foul so far. Jordan going to foul out, bro. Can't get 40 points if you foul out. They led the game at one point by 20. Wilkins making a statement with that one. Showing these fans that Jordan's not the only high flyer in town. 
Clark, we were talking about size. Both of these teams start a seven-footer at center. Yeah, you know, contact and Cartwright are very imposing at that position, Kevin. And then you get Grant and Malone are paired evenly at 6'10". So, hey, there's no way this game is not going to be physical in the paint. That'll be a battle for sure. Hodges checked in for Pippen. And a change for the Hawks. Malone's checked in. We all know about Michael's offensive prowess, okay? But he's incredible defensively as well. He works hard at that end, and that's rare for a star. Now here's Wilkins. Shot clock at six. He kicks it to Tony from deep three-point range, and it's King with the rebound. A little bit of a heat check right there, rising up from way downtown. So far, Michael <laughs> has been getting just about close everything he wants on the offensive end. And that's not unexpected, but, you know, that doesn't bode well for the Hawks as Wilkins has been unable to answer Jordan with shots of his own, which I think says a lot about Great what the Chicago defense is doing. I agree. Here's Wilkins. The Bulls getting their last shot to go. You know, and to put things simply, they've outworked the opposition on the glass, which is why they have this lead. Pass to Armstrong. The shot from the low post is good. And the Bulls lead by 20. Craig Hodges is more than just a shooter, folks. He knows how to get the ball to his open teammates. Rivers passes to Wilkins. Rivers looking over the floor. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Top foul. And they're shooting their fifth and sixth free throws of the game. And the first one at the line is good. So for the Bulls. Cartwright's checked in for Purdue. Grant comes in for King. And it's Paxson in for B.J. Armstrong. Webb's checked in for the Hawks. The shot's good from Paxson. Yeah, and Jordan sees the floor so nicely. I mean, one of his guys has a clean look. He gets the ball to him in whip-like fashion. Here's Webb. Passes it to Rivers. Top foul. Every time down the court, they foul, bro. You will never get through the game like that. Good on the second free throw. And so Grant will bring it up for Chicago. Pass to Paxson. Michael Jordan on the wing. Grant sets a screen for Jordan. Shoots over Wilkin. Jordan can't get it to go. The Hawks trail by 20. To the middle. Here's Webb. He can't get it to go. And Chicago will go the other way with the ball. Inside. Ah, getting some elevation, Michael Jordan. And it's Jordan with the jam. Michael's team goes to an even higher level when Atlanta enters this building. It's a rivalry that Jordan welcomes each and every time. Wilkins against Jordan. Wilkins surveying the defense. And if he would have made that. And so it's Chicago cruising into the quarter break with a 22-point lead. A look at the field goal percentage numbers tells the story of what tough defense they're playing today. We'll get right back to the action when we return. So welcome back, everyone, to the third quarter of this contest between the Bulls and the Hawks, where Michael Jordan and Dominic Wilkins have been going at it. <sighs> Chicago leading by 22. And as this second half gets underway, the defensive ability of the Hawks and Bulls only become more important. You got to limit your opponents down the stretch, and both of these teams have the ability to do that. Second half underway, and here's who Mike Fratello's got on the floor. Malone is out there with Konkak, then it's Webb, and it's Rivers, and it's Wilkins, and at the small forward position. Konkak knocked away, stolen by Pippen. 
And here's Jordan outside. Rebound Come on, man. We were talking about this before, but Clark, some very capable defenders on both sides of the floor. No doubt about it, Kevin. I mean, the duo of Pippen and Jordan, so effective at wreaking havoc and forcing turnovers. And the Hawks have Doc Rivers, who can hassle ball handlers. He's physical as a backcourt defender, as well as Moses down low. Get him. Glass and block shots, too. Both look fun to watch. Offensively, Clark things have oh, I thought that was a clean steal, bro. I thought that was a clean steal. Jordan was able to top Wilkins in scoring in the first and second quarters combined. A critical advantage partner that he worked really hard to get. Not all of his hoops were easy ones. Right, you're right on that. And it's the Bulls with the ball. After the basket by Atlanta. First minute and a half of basketball here in the third quarter. And the call will be against Scotty Pippen. That'll be his second foul of the game. Personal foul. Second team foul. Wilkins the pass to Conker. There's the pass to Webb. Just five to shoot. Atlanta needs to get off a shot here. Solid defense from Cart right there, using his size and instincts to stay on top of the shooter. Hello, hello, hello. Jordan against Wilkins. And another shot. When you think about Michael Jordan, you think about scoring, putting the ball in the basket. But he does a lot of other stuff out there. Wow, oh, Pippen showing out. That move. Not quite two and a half minutes played here in the second half. Rivers can't get it to go. You know, we touched on it. Last year, Michael Jordan Clark was actually eighth Ooh. in the league in total assists. He was a top ten assistant. It's not something My that comes to mind when you think about him, but it's very impressive nonetheless, Kevin. Shows you what kind of leader he is. He knows he's got to get his teammates involved and work well with them for his team to be its best. Yeah, he's a terrific facilitator. No doubt. Looking like Moses Malone out there, just dominating the glass. To the middle. Second half of play, and we're three minutes into the third here. Misses off the left iron. And so it's Wilkins who brings up the ball for the Atlanta Hawks. Here in the third quarter, the Bulls, Clark, have managed to be pretty effective when it comes to defending Dominique Wilkins. Yeah, you know, their focus, Kevin, in terms of defending him, I think has really been good. Really good. And I think you can tell mm, please. he started to frustrate Dominique a bit. You can. So far, the game, he's gone two for four from the free throw line. Chicago making some changes. King comes in for Bill Carter. And B.J. Armstrong has subbed in for John Paxson. And then for Atlanta, Willis he checked in for Concat. Hart comes in for Moses Malone. And Smith subbed in for Webb. Proving just how lethal he can be on the drive. Armstrong getting into the... Don't call a timeout. Come on, man. You're not coming back, bro. It's over, bro. Look at Phil Jackson, a young Phil, younger Phil Jackson. Come on, man. Let's get this over with. We got a whole nother quarter and a half, man. No, a whole nother quarter to go. Come on, man. Wilkins We're not letting Dominique up. score. We'll let anybody score but him. And he lobs it up toward the rim. As soon as I say that, they throw a lobby. They throw an alley. -oop. Boy, nice setup with the pass. And Wilkins bounces up knowing just what to do with it. These Hawks have a trusted and capable leader steering the ship. And that's Come on, Dominique. Waiting on you. He won Coach of the Year for his work with this team in the 86 season. Smith's shot is good. Smith. Could have been much better they need to start the Kenny Smith. This guy, any room to operate. As we get deeper into this game, Clark, it has been all Jordan offensively, as we can see, leaving Dominique well behind him. You know, I didn't think it would be this one-sided. I mean, Jordan is just Whoa! hey now, hey now, oh, yeah. Six, and being the car is six nine, he's capable of throwing it down, especially when the defense is playing him like this. And it's sent back by Wilkins. And so the ball is out of bounds. Wilkins touched it last. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. 
stolen. Carr with the ball. He's picked up by Jordan. Here's Wilkins. And he uses the glass on the lane. Wilkins has got four this quarter. This offensive surge is just what they needed right about now. Here's Jordan. And it's sent back by Wilkins. One oh six left in the third quarter. And they double up Jordan. Pass to Armstrong. Lock at six. And the Bulls with another miss. Here's Atlanta. Big run right now going for him. 11-2. And it's Smith missing. Chicago leading by 20. And there you go. Good job. So a chance at the line for one more. A good example of Armstrong's determination there. Gets the bucket and a chance for one more. Oh my god, bro. Come on, man. Smith feeling it out a bit. And it's King with the rebound. And here are the Bulls now. Now eight seconds separate in the two clocks. Jordan dishes to Grant. Back to Jordan. And they double up Jordan. Passes it to King. Back to Jordan. Top of the key. And good as it just snugs right down through the net. Efficiency personified there. Jordan scoring at will, taking over the game whenever he chooses. The three quarters of play all in the books. There you go. All but over already. You're in Chicago, just dominating this one. And time to step aside quickly, but we'll be back in no time with the start of the fourth quarter. Welcome back, everyone. We get into the fourth quarter of this thrilling game between the Atlanta Hawks and the Chicago Bulls. And this crowd is feeling it. Yeah, they get it over with. These quarters, man, six-minute quarters. Yeah, so it's with it. I guess they're trying to give you another chance to do the challenge, I guess. so conscious of Michael Jordan. I mean, he's got something of a reputation for being a closer, and that's an understatement. He finds a way to push himself beyond his limits to come up with clutch points when his team needs it most. John Paxson is out there with Michael Jordan. Then it's Pippen. And there's Cartwright. And it's Grant in at the four. That's the five out there for the... Bulls. Webb against Paxson. Pass to Rivers. Here's Malone. The put back, he hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Boy, his length, his persistence, his size, Moses was custom made to own the glass. Great offensive play right there. And here's Jordan outside. Here's Cartwright. Can't get it to fall. Atlanta with the ball. Just over a minute played here in the fourth. Webb the pass to Rivers. Poked away. Five to shoot. And Grant sends it back. One of the better defenders in this game. Grant teeing off on that one. Jordan on the wing. He's guarded by Rivers. And they double up Jordan. Back to Benson. Good, and the assist goes to Jordan. Man. Jordan's got six assists now in the game. You know, something I like about both of these teams, the Bulls and the Hawks, is the experience they have, the range of experience. I mean, you've got younger guys like John Conner. Wilk is not in the game. And then you've got the seasoned veterans like Moses and Bill Cartwright. It's a really good balance. And here's Grant. He'll bring it up for the Chicago Bulls. A great fourth quarter, just giving up two points. The shot's good from Jordan. Four more points. Four points away. Loves getting tricky with his ball handling and creating shots for himself. Clark, I've always wondered how valuable you think it is for younger players to get a chance to play alongside more experienced players. Kevin, I think it's crucial and absolutely vital 
See how Jordan run the floor? Like, come on, man. Like, it makes it so easy when they run the floor like that. How you carry yourself as a pro and all of the nuances of playing in the NBA. Good veterans can help young players set the tone for the rest of their careers. Oh, that's a great answer. Moses Malone gets the bucket. Malone owns the paint area of the floor. Nobody coming in there messing with him. Rivers against Jordan, and so it looks like the Bulls will retain possession here. Bill Purdue's checked in for the Bulls. Neely comes in for Grant, and the Hawks making a change here as well. Concax checked in for Moses Malone. Here's Jordan. Damn, Jordan. Just make the shot, bro. Rivers against Jordan. Oh, and there's the alley-oop. And it's Willis finishing it off. Willis. Big time move to the rack. And his teammates loving it. Yeah. They're loving it. We're loving it. Everyone likes an aerial show. Atlanta. That's clearly a frustration foul. You can see that coming by the look on his face. So for the Bulls, Hodges checked in for Pippen. And B.J. Armstrong has subbed in for Baxson. And then for Atlanta, Carr, he's checked in for Willis. Smith comes in for Doc Rivers. And it's Tony in for Webb. The pass to Armstrong. And another miss by Chicago. Atlanta with the ball. Smith the pass to Carr. Back to Smith. Good ball oh, they got the Wilkins out of there. Kicks it to Come Tony. on, man. Go on, score. You got it. Fires from deep. They get it back. Jeez. Conkak put that one right back where it came from. Good for a handful of boards per game is the big fella. Jordan looking around. No good on the shot. So the Hawks will take it the other way. And there's the call on Michael Jordan. All right, Jordan. That's his fourth foul of the contest. Anybody but Jordan. I'm trying to do the challenge. One thirty-seven left in the fourth quarter of this one. Chicago foul. B.J. Armstrong. First personal foul. Second team foul. And that one falls. Yeah, just let him have the free throw. Get us the ball back, and they're gonna just run the clock down. He hits both from the strike. Chicago leading by twenty-two. Here's there we go. Finishing with force. Whoa. Listen to this Chicago score 40. Hold on, me day. We did all of them. We oh, did all of them. Erupting. What a jam! By now, Roger hold the ball. You can hold the ball. Hodges against Smith, and there's the drive. Passes to Livingston. Yeah, just hold the ball. Back to Smith. Six to shoot. There's a time run right out. it to Tony. Over Armstrong. Here's Carr. They shoot again. Carr ah, is foul. Contact and he's also a reliable free throw shooter, too. Personal foul. Jordan finna foul out for nothing. Oh, Antonio. Antonio Carr, bro. Antoine Carr. You finna foul out over him? You gotta be kidding me. Second free throw, good. Not nearly as productive a trip to the line as he'd have liked. They need all their free throws to go down at this point. Pass to Armstrong. Purdue with a screen on Tony. Armstrong against Tony. From deep. Atlanta with the rebound. 35 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And the pass to Carr. Troy from the foul out, bro. Back to Tony. From downtown. Good D by Jordan. 
in a bit of a shooting slump here. I mean, he can't seem to get anything going. Armstrong with it. But three. Michael Jordan. And that's good. You know, the three shot is not a go-to shot for MJ. But his touch still... Scotty, you ain't getting in, Scotty. Once again, always special though to watch these two go at it head to. All right, let's move on. What's the next challenge against the New York Knicks? Dominique Wooden didn't even get 10 points, bro. I think this they had Jordan had more challenges than Kobe, bro. Sixty-nine points. I could have swore they did one against the Knicks. They didn't do one against the Knicks. Chicago Bulls at Cleveland Cavaliers. Michael Jordan with a bit of extra motion motivation drops a career sixty-nine points in one hundred seventeen. This was in 1990, regular season win over. You know, like, this wasn't even a significant game like that. Oh, he got 15 legendary games. I'm not going to be able to do all these games. One, two, three, four, five. I'll do another one. I'll finish it up on the second string. How about that? I'll just finish it up on the second string because I'm at three and a half hours and I didn't get, I, st I did, got 15 legendary games. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we did six. So we got so we got like nine more games to go. Wow. I'll come back and finish it later. So I mean, I'll come back and do a part two. There with you, the community for our 2K TV Tuesday event. We were out there I'll do a part two. And it was a huge success. I didn't know it was so many games. I'll do a part two. I'll do part two. I'll be back with another one.